snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and this is Kevin Hub, your co-host, and this is the Angry Snowboarder Podcast. And it has been one month since the last time we did one, and we're doing another one. So more frequent than the time before, which was a gap of 10 months? 10 months. Something like that? Yes, we did three or four, three, and then we three. just completely stopped. So if we make it to number three, we well, will be we even with where we were. But I think we can probably make this go... I think we can make it go yes. longer. Anyways, the theme of this month's podcast is bad snowboard inventions that we've seen. We're going to dissect a lot of topics from rotational bindings, LED snowboards, Gilson snowboards, Rurock helmets, the uh, the anti-beanie, the, the helmet beanie. The snowboard pull. The snowboard pull. Uh, the... the uh, the stuff on the wheel over here that I can't think of. The powder lots, foil. There's... Lots of stuff. It's over-engineered and unnecessary. Yes. Uh, just the worst ideas ever for snowboarding. So with that said, that's what the podcast's about. But well, we need to catch up on a few things. Kevin went to Mexico and drank the water. I came back fine. I did drink the water. I ate fruit and veggies. I did all the wrong things. Well, I mean, I didn't drink, like, village water. You know, like, I'm not, like, the villages actually have water. Maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know. I didn't really look it out. So <laughs> Yes. So, uh, yeah. Kevin went to Mexico. I didn't. I've been looking for a car. I was going to buy a car today, and they sold it out from under me. So if anyone is an auto broker and would like to help me find the car I've been looking for for the last year, please email me, averin at angrysnowboarder.com. Or feel free to donate a car. We take free cars. Yes, as actually. As are not piles of poo. Actually, if you're a car dealership and you would like to sponsor us, hey. I will take a free car, preferably a Volvo XC90 R design with the tan trim. I will take anything with four-wheel drive. Maybe not even four-wheel. All-wheel, four-wheel, two-wheel with really good snow tires. I'll take something that runs. He wants a rear-wheel drive car. Like no, a Mustang, no, convertible. No. Yes. No. Yes. Because that's what your girlfriend drove to the mountains. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Yes, it was. But now she drives a Jeep. She's good now. She is good now. Uh, and also in that time, uh, Gershon Dorfman, head of sales for K2, reached out to me and hooked me up with a brand new set of the Renin boot. So I'm actually going to be running a slightly softer boot this year, part of the season, I think. So yeah. thank you, Gershon. Thank you, K2. Uh, they did not sponsor this episode. So... If not were, yet. Not yet. Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Also, Kevin has been talking to Big Jim over at Ride, and we are putting together a wish list of gear to ride to review for you guys. So yep. we've got that going on. Mm -hmm. On Fridays, you can catch Kevin and Can Kevin Carpet, which we just dropped the Shark Bite episode, which everyone is laughing at that. They're like, effective edge on one, 156, effective edge on the heel. 125. Yep, that sounds about right. Might even be shorter than that. It might be. So uh, That was an interesting one. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch that. This is kind of when uh, Can Kevin Carpet starts to get good. We start riding the weird stuff. Yes, so there is a bunch of weird things going on with that there. Uh, let's see, what else have we got? Oh, binding reviews have started to drop. So yep. you will be getting a lot of binding reviews. I'm finishing up the last ones we have. Everything else has been uploaded to our YouTube channel, so you will be seeing that. Um, okay, and snowboard reviews will be coming very soon. I've got, I got a few in last year before I mangled my knee, so we will be dropping some board reviews. And then uh, the other big news is Arapaho Basin opened here in Colorado today, and yep. I promptly did not get out of bed and go ride. I stayed in bed till about 11.30. You know what? Best opening day ever. I might go Monday. You want to go Monday? Maybe. Okay, we might go snowboard. We might go snowboard Monday. Um, which basically means 10 laps and then burritos. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. Pretty much. So there's that. Uh, Loveland opens tomorrow. But guess guess who else opened today? Killington and Sunday River, Maine. And I got photos from both, and it looked fucking scary. Wow. That's ambitious. Chunder Muffin Expression. Express. Killington had a 10-inch base and was reporting one inch of new snow. 10-inch oh, base. Uh, like, someone sent me a photo, and it was half of a... It wasn't even half of a run. It was like a quarter of a run. Like, the literal white ribbon of death. You could see where the cat had driven up it, but it did not look groomed. Like, 
It's fucking sketchy. Dude, um, why? Like, wait a week. Yeah, no. At so just a week, and you can make so much more progress on that. That doesn't. Uh, Wolf sense. Creek opened last weekend, and my good friend John Brossman's wife Jesse mm-hmm. was able to get in with the 4G network and get first chair. So that was Nate Dog 4Gs. Always remember 4Gs. Yeah. yeah. Trailer Tom and Mr. Chad Otterstrom himself. Yep. So. And actually, Wolf Creek, uh, I guess everyone said it was like knee-deep powder, yeah, and it wasn't a, that crowded. No, I had a couple buds that went out there, and it was kind of hot pow. The type of snow that if you get out of your board and try to walk through it, it's like thigh deep. And you go and try and ride it, and you basically sink about three inches down. So pretty heavy stuff, but still, like, some of the footage they were getting, like, they were hitting, like, rock gaps and, like, actually snowboarding. They were actually snowboarding. So kind of crazy. But, yep. Um, and then sun- Sunday, we got a foot of snow here in Breckenridge. Yep. And it's sticking around. Temperatures during the day have not exceeded 50 degrees yet. I don't even think they went above 45 today. Uh, highest day for next week is only projected to be 51. Yep. But we're supposed to see snow at the end of next week. So it's been really good for the start of the season here. So, but hopefully we, it continues. Yes, hopefully. We did not go ride the White Ribbon of Death yet. No. So, which, I mean, last year I did not have a good start to my season. I got a concussion. <laughs> yeah. Well, the same dude that went to Wolf Creek, one of his friends, was throwing up today from a concussion. Yeah. Yeah. People just, we were even joking about it, how, like, talking about it yesterday with all the other dudes at the shop, that just, like, the early season edits that come out of a base are just retarded. Like, throwing hammers. Like, Guys, it's October. You got your whole season ahead of you. And this is this is the cycle we always see here in, in Summit County. Is A-Basin opens. Everybody's like, got to start throwing hammers. Got to start getting footage. And then about mid to late November, we're seeing blown knees. We're seeing broken collarbones. We're seeing strains. People are just blowing themselves up because they're going way too hard, way too early. Like, yeah. The whole I'm season not, here, guys. And I'm not going hard this year. freaking long. Cool it. Yeah. I don't understand. So, so there's that. Uh, and then we're going to do a follow-up right now for last month that I pissed off a, we, mainly me, pissed off a bunch of people. I'm just going to say, what I said sticks. I don't give a fuck. And that's that. Uh, let's see. What else is going on? Oh, I pissed off Aaron Leibowitz from Elevated Surfcraft for calling him out. Uh, we just did a top five, top five volume shifted, overall volume shifted powder boards, and he decided to leave a comment acting like we don't know what his brand is, which we did. We talked to him about working with him. I literally talked to him in person at SAA last So did year. I. Yeah. And talked to him on snow. Yeah. And he, like, we... And he specifically, he's... like, he sent me messages like, hey, let's meet up. Yeah. On on my Instagram, knowing that it was with Angry Snowboarder, like, it wasn't just me. Like, why would he do that? Unless I was attached to Angry Snowboarder. So specifically was seeking us out to get us to try and ride stuff. And I ran out of time at SA because I was there for my other job. And then he basically, basically was like a middle finger. Cause he was like, well, there's boards in Aspen. Get them if you can. Yeah. Didn't tell like, us where they were in Aspen. Hit me up. Yeah. And like, he said he was going to leave boards for us either at Copper or Breckenridge. I think he said Breckenridge. He was going to leave them at Mountain Wave for us. Yeah. And then he took them to Aspen, and then he just basically said, well, they're in Aspen if you want to get Didn't say where they were. Just a complete middle finger and fuck you to him. So I called him out, and he went about as butthurt as I thought he would, Mm -hmm. which is fine because fuck him, fuck his brain. And the only reason I think that he actually reached out to us or, like, put anything on our social media from that top five was because Telos Snowboards got the number one slot for the backslash, which... You should buy five of them. They're doing pre-orders now. Get them while you can. But that factory, which is GP87, is making hit mass-producing his boards. So, or is trying to. I don't. I don't really know what's going on there. Yeah, and we'll I think that's that why. Happens. Yeah, I think that he reached out. He did that because he saw that they got an award and he was jealous. Frankly, I really don't give a fuck. He's another Me Too brand, and he's one of those people that I was stoked to want to ride his stuff and tell the way he treated me. And I'm just, you know, I've done this long enough where if you don't want to work with us or you're going to be hard to work with, I will just say, fuck it. You're not worth my fucking time anymore. Yep. And that's it. It's it's the same way that I feel about, um, God, what's that company from up in Canada there? The, the fucking, he's on SBF, uh, the fullback. Oh, yeah. That guy is one of the biggest pains in the dick to try to work with. And everyone's like, you should ride one. You should ride a big full bag. And I'm sure, just, we'd love to. But the dude's I'm impossible to work with. Possible to work with. And, and other people have solidified that. And 
I get this with a lot of brands where I'm like, I will be stoked to work with them. And then they open their mouth and they condescend or they treat me like shit or they make false promises. And I'm sick of just biting my tongue and being like, uh huh, uh huh. I'm just like, fuck it. I'm just going to call them out. You want to know what calling out, especially from you guys in the audience, did for us? You guys got us union bindings this year. Yeah. Like, that wasn't us. No. You guys opened that door. That was the comments in the YouTube videos and some other stuff on the website. That was you guys saying, why the hell don't you have union? And finally they listened and said, oh, I guess we don't have a choice. We've got to send them stuff. So we've got it now. So if you guys want us to ride a brand and we can't get them, fucking email them. Social media blast them. Do anything you want. Make them change their mind because I'm sick of devoting hours of time for we've nothing got, we've in We've got better time. things to do than big brands to send us stuff. Little brands that are going to benefit more from us writing their stuff than we're going to benefit from writing their stuff. Yeah. So, and like I we're, told, yeah, we're not doing it anymore. Like I told Aaron Leibowitz, this is exactly what I said. I was like, we're the gatekeepers to a community. And you guys expect us to introduce you to new brands, tell you what's going on, tell you how things are, and do that. If that company does not want to work with us, then why would we allow them to work with or to visit you and be part of this community and introduce you? Because if they're saying we're not worth their time or the effort or to make them just do a minimal amount of work, I mean, literally, literally the guy had to drive 14.2 miles from the copper demo to leave boards. Mm -hmm. And that was it. But then he drove them to Aspen two and a half hours one way for us. I haven't owned a car in 15 fucking years. Like, that's not it. Like, our reps. And neither of us have Aspen passes. We can't ride Aspen. Yeah. I mean, I can't pay to ride Aspen. Yeah. Like, what am I going to do? Drive out there and then drive back here? Yeah. That's Let ridiculous. alone, they're just, they're, I left them for you at Aspen. Cool. Great statement. Where did you leave them? Maybe I know someone. I. It doesn't matter. But they, this, basically, the long and the short of it is, fuck this guy. I really don't care. I took screenshots of the whole thing, and they will be posted up behind me on the YouTube video for everyone else to dissect, whether you like what I have to say or not. I am at a point now where I think calling brands out again is probably what actually needs to happen. Yeah. Someone needs to just say, hey, you guys fucking suck. Up your game. Uh, on another note, the brand Snowfisk out of Utah reached back out to me, and they want us to review some of their new stuff. They tweak some stuff. So if you haven't seen awesome. the reviews, they make, they make nothing but powder boards. Uh, they've got a 66 Swallowtail. They've got called the Deeps. They've got some volume shifted boards, stuff like that. So they will be sending us some more of that. And that is a little brand with a lot of cool little tech in there. And if you haven't seen the reviews, you should check it out. I'll yeah. put a link down below in the description for the audio podcast. And I will put a link for YouTube. For a Western manufacturer, they're definitely different and definitely worth looking at if you're looking for something different. So. Yeah. That, that's kind of the long and short there. Um, I do kind of wonder with this elevated surf craft thing if we'll be in invited to Shaper Summit in Jackson Hole. It's supposedly media is always invited, but you know what? I bet you we know more people there than him. Oh, we definitely know more <laughs> there than him. So, yeah. um, you know, I've seen brands like this just be flash in the pan. So basically, uh, don't expect any elevated surf craft reviews or anything like that. But I Unless am, you really, really want them, and then that's up to you guys. You guys need to yeah. make that happen, but uh, frankly, that dude needs to apologize and get his head out of his ass and yeah. stop acting like an entitled millennial. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing is, I'm working on a top five, it'll be coming out soon, of micro board manufacturers, like more like shapers, that you guys should keep your eye on. Like yeah. This is stuff that I've never ridden, but they've got unique shapes, they've got a cool thing going on with their company and stuff. Totally. So I'm looking at a top five. There's a couple brands that you guys have probably never heard of that I'm going to be doing it, and that'll probably be coming out in November. Uh, one of the other things I want to address is the Angry Snowboarder store. <laughs> you guys fucking killed it. 32 hours, 100% sell through on everything I put up. Like, couldn't. Couldn't believe it. I fucked up on the shipping, though, and undercharged. So everyone that ordered something, I ate a bunch of costs, but you got your product. So that was good. There have been a few issues with shipping. Some people haven't gotten some stuff, so I've had to actually reship sticker packs. Uh, this happens, but it looks like right now uh, Ian Mul Mulhall, I think that's his name, Mulhall, one of our fans, uh, he got part of his package today, so he got his sweatshirt, but... Uh, so that was the United Kingdom. So I know that everyone should have got that. Uh, we will not have anything for limited release for the month of October. 
building it up for next month for November, but there will be a bunch of new shirts, a bunch of hoodies. For all you guys that bitched and moaned that I didn't do anything over in XL, you big and tall guys are getting a special drop just for you. Limited run hoodies all the way up to, I think, triple X. I was maybe going to do a quad X as well, but the cost on that's a little high. Also, for Black Friday, I will be doing a gift box drop. There will be, I believe, nine of them. It is a mystery box. You have no say of what's inside it, but there will be some awesome things in there. So there's that going on for us. So if you wanted to get a sticker pack, I have pulled them up right now, but I will be putting them back on next month. Uh, there will be a video announcement. There will be a social media announcement you will be able to get what we are about to drop. And I have ordered a lot more stuff this time around. So instead of two of everything, I think I pretty much ordered three or four of everything, but it will be a 36 hour flash sale. So you got 36 hours to order it. And after that, we're gonna give a pre-warning when they, yeah, when they're gonna drop. Yeah, 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 yeah. the video will drop the day before, just announcing everything. They'll be so plugs. keep an eye out. Make sure you know. And if you want to guess, that, make sure you know when it's going to be dropping. Yeah. Uh, the other thing is we want to do more live streams. Uh, I've been kind of dropping the ball on this, but I think I've got a new setup for that. So I think next week I will try to do a live stream on Friday. So for those of you that don't know, today is what, the 18th? 19th. 19th. It's the 19th um, of October. So that'll be right around Halloween-ish. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, there will be a live stream because we haven't done one of those in about a year. So been a while, been a while. And we're gonna try and play around doing that. Like on hell, I may even do that on my own if I'm testing something. You know, I'll try to make sure you guys know when it's gonna happen, um, so that you can get on and ask some questions, whatever. If I'm testing something out that you guys are curious about or anything else, you know, we may try and do some on hill live streams as well. Yeah, and uh, one of the things I was thinking of as snowboarders and cars, if Kevin and I are driving anywhere, like cause we got some, we're looking yeah. at a trip to Utah trip to Jackson and a trip to Taos, mm -hmm. give or take. Uh, when we're driving, we'll have some time. And if I've got someone running co-pilot, then they can read the questions to me and I can drive and vice versa. Yep. So we'll uh, we'll do that for you guys. Just We're trying to do more unique things for you. The, uh, the other thing is a lot of you guys have been saying you love our video reviews, but there's no riding footage. One, all those board reviews, you have to realize I had to reshoot those because my hard drive had died. So that was 233 videos that I had to reshoot with a concussion. So if you actually look at my eyes, I'm fucking out of it. Uh, but I had lost basically two terabytes or one terabyte of footage. So I had to film yeah. two terabytes. Uh, I'm picking up the new GoPro seven. Not every video is going to have tons of riding footage. We're not biting on snowboard pro camper. And this is something I've wanted to do for years, but we hadn't had the financial means and things hadn't been where I wanted. And, to. The, and the way we used to do the reviews was we would cram them all into the spring season and to be able to film riding on top of trying to review as many boards as we did in that short amount of time, which is, it was a it, logistical it, nightmare. To logistical. Try to I mean, you got to think that so, like, like realistically, I was riding like 116, 125 boards a season and cramming in. And I would ride them from the end of January, or let's say roughly, if I was lucky, the middle of January, to like the first or second week of May. Right. And then I would write them all out and then I'd get everything all set and then we would drop them usually in September and everything's kind of changed with the shift to YouTube and how we're doing things. So I just want everyone to be kind of apprised of that situation. Like mm -hmm. we're taking some feedback, but the big thing is by and large, like we are still an independently financed operation we rely a lot on YouTuber ad revenue, affiliate ad revenue, and Angry Snowboarder VIP. Angry Snowboarder VIP is literally what is funding this podcast. It is what has funded the growth that everyone has seen since January. Yep. So if you are not a member of Angry Snowboarder VIP, I would strongly encourage you to check it out. See if that's something that you would like to be a part of. There are multiple tiers over there. Some of the tiers, you can get a monthly sticker pack. That's our sticker club. So every month, you get an envelope with stickers in it. and then there's the ultra tier, the elite tier, where uh, which is about to change actually. So this is a surprise for all the other members. But starting um, starting in December, every member of the ultra tier, like you get a package, you get a thing when you sign up, and then you would be entered into a raffle in June and December. But now I'm also going to give everyone that's in that tier a sticker envelope in 
June and December. So basically, if you say you signed up, it's October, you'd get one in October, you'd get one in December, and you'd get another one in June, as long as you were a current active member in there and currently supporting us. And then there's the super mega ultra tier, which is like $500 a month. I really don't believe anyone will ever click on it, but it's there. <laughs> I, and then I might even add one that's even higher tier, but uh, we're in the process of redoing Angry Snowboarder VIP, which is actually on the Patreon platform. It's one of those things that it's it's really allowed us. This is what's actually allowed Kevin to work more with us yeah. now. So uh, got that. It's paid for equipment. It's it's paid. It's just given a lot more ease for the amount of work. And like we both work forty hour a week jobs, yep. and then I put another hundred hours a week into Angry Snowboarder. So, if yeah, so you like the progress that we've made since January, and you want to keep that kind of progress coming and keep moving us forward, and keep seeing the stuff that you guys really want to see, and you're saying, "Oh, we want to see this, we want to see this," that we haven't done yet, that is the best way to help keeping us progressing towards that stuff that you guys want to see is Angry Snowboarder VIP. Yeah, and. I'm like I said, I'm gonna redo it. And the way I look at it is when I redo this, like you got you will see a new video go up on the YouTube channel, you will see it posted on our social media, and it will be on the angry snowboarder.vip page, which is Patreon. That will be there and it will fully break down what we are trying to do now going forward in the future because I actually have a very serious direction, what I want to do, and there's a staff I want to get involved in, I think. Funding it through the snowboarders of the internet will allow us to do that. So with that said, I think this is kind of everything that we've been working on. I want to say one more thing. For all you people that have Rokus, you need to go check out Casey Willax's Stoked Life. I think that's what they're calling it. But my friend Casey Willax, I don't know if you follow him on YouTube. You should. He's, he's a way more positive person than me, which is fine. <laughs> I'm not a positive person. I'm a realist. That's... I see things exactly how they are, and it's kind of sad and depressing. Um, but he's got his own channel over there, so I think it's a lot of the same stuff that's going up on his YouTube channel. But if you have a Roku, check it out. I just want to support the homie over there. I've known Casey for years now, actually. I think I want to say like five, six years. Um, you know, he's, he's been a good friend. I've done Thanksgiving with him a couple times, uh, you know. Just different things like that. And I know he's over in Europe now, and eventually he will work his way back to Colorado, and we're supposed to go get tacos, so I know he'll probably film that. Yeah. Because um, that's what Casey does, because he's doing that vlog life. But basically, Casey Willex is the Casey Neistat of snowboarding, in my opinion. Yep. So go follow him. Go check out the Roku. I want to just make sure that he's getting recognized for what he's doing and the hard work he's doing. Yep. And I think any company that wants to give him product – should 100% give him product, but he does not need to be sponsored by any one company anymore. He's he's transcended that as a rider, and he's a great rider. And yeah, he is. He'll teach you a lot of good things. Plus, sometimes you get uh, guest appearances on his videos from our good friend Crowbar. Yeah. Who, uh, just to spill the beans, you will see this in the Angry Snowboarder VIP revamp, but uh, he wants to do trick tip videos with us. And Crowbar is a coach at Mount Snow Academy. Mm hmm so we want to make trick tip videos for you. So you guys are hearing it here first or watching it on YouTube. I'm not sure where you guys are doing this, but digesting yeah. our uh, voices and or faces. Yes. Uh, hopefully not in your stomachs. It's really morbid. I keep having visions of uh, brain digestion, brain digestion. I don't, it, it, I just vision that scene from, uh, was it the dream child for, uh, was it uh, Nightmare on Elm Street four, five? Can't remember, but it's the one where like all the little people start coming out of Freddy's chest and shit. I don't know; it's really gruesome. But I love I love Nightmare on Elm Street, so um, can't just can't remember what the which movie it was right now. But anyways, with that said, we're gonna dive into the this. We're gonna deep dive into the worst snowboard inventions ever made, and we're going to drastically talk about them. And you're gonna listen or watch. So getting into this, I think the one, when I polled everyone in social media and everything, the, what they thought was a bad idea was uh, leashes. Yeah. Which I noticed the other day that I don't think anybody's shipping leashes with their bindings anymore. I think Rosnall is. Is Rosie still? I know they were on the rental binding. I remember that. I think they are on the regular. I, 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 think, regular. I, don't remember. I can't remember if my K2s had it in there. But well, what it was funny was... 
on Instagram uh, for this, um, I got a bunch of different comments from all different types of riders, but the funniest one uh, had to have been Kevin Jones, who literally is like my personal hero in snowboarding because um, I'm from that generation. But uh, he, he was just like, puke stomp pads, but the leash is by far the winner. I remember not being allowed on the lift without one. I always wondered what would happen if the binding I had the leash attached to popped off the board. Number one cause of death in the Siberian Alps north of Tyrol, month 22. <laughs> so, um, and that was always the dumb thing about leashes is they were attached to your binding. And I've seen more bindings blow off boards than I've seen boots blow out of bindings. Yes. So what the hell is a leash for? So, so funny thing, uh, I grew up in western New York and they have the leash law in New York State where you have to have a leash. So one time I tried to argue with the lifty. I was like, I got two of them. He's like, what do you mean? I was like, I got a toe leash. I got a heel leash. <laughs> he wouldn't do it. He's like, you need to have a leash. I literally took a rubber band and a paper clip and attached it. And he said that was good enough. Yeah. What the fuck is that going to do? And uh, to follow up Kevin Jones's comment was Hans Minnich, which you can see in the new... You can see him in the new Absinthe movie, Stay Tuned, I believe. I believe that's who he's touring with. Um, let's be real here. Skis need leashes. Can't tell you how many skis I've seen ripping down the hill with no skier to be seen around. That is so fucking true. I can remember uh, one opening weekend at Breckenridge. Uh, the, it was a good year that year, so the park was open top to bottom, and some dude fell on jump three at the top, and his ski came all the way down through the park like because the bottom had no features. And slammed into the lift building and just blew the tip apart. I, I mean, that thing must have been cooking at about 60. Just straight torpedo right in there. Mm -hmm. And so, leashes leashes are fucking pointless. Like, if the binding detaches and the leash is attached to the binding, what's the board going to do? It's just going to fall and shoot down the hill. Yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, like, what are the chances that both of your feet are going to blow off your board? It's already pretty low that one foot is going to blow out of your binding at all. And the chances of both feet blowing out of your binding? The, I'm trying to think of what video. I've seen it in a few videos. It's usually like big backcountry jumps. Like Scotty Lago blew up a set of flows. And I think Danny Cass blew up a set of. I know. They're either bent metal. Our buddy Jordan. Uh, yeah. White Jordan. Yeah. Uh, he's, he's had it happen. He blew up. I mean, he brought him in to show me. Because he's all, he was also pretty confident that the fact that the binding bent because it was the NX2's aluminum frame, actually saved his life, because it didn't quite blow all the way off, but, yeah, like, I mean, he wrecked so hard, he almost blew out of his bindings. Yeah. But, he bent the binding, and still didn't blow out of it. Yes. Like, so, that's how hard it is, to blow out of a binding. Which yeah. is the only situation, you need a leash. So, leashes, so... Leashes are fucking pointless. They're so pointless. Maybe if you're riding the Burton Step on? Maybe? But then what's the point of having the leash? Because that then you got something you have to unclip to step out with. Right. So you kinda I, mean, I guess your front front I mean front foot is what you would normally put it on, but still, like I don't know. I'll tell you what blows my mind is when I see people with those big ass wraparound. Oh leashes yeah. With huge oh dangle. yeah. And I'm like, how the fuck are you riding in the trees with that thing? Oh yeah. You gotta wrap that thing right around and just break your leg. Yeah. Like, what the fuck, man? I don't know. I don't know. You paddling out? What's going on? Like, maybe they use them for, like, autoerotic asphyxiation in the chandala. I don't know. I, don't, I, I don't really understand why leashes still exist or why certain states still enforce it. Because technology has gotten so much better that, like, the odds of your binding falling off your board, you, you would know that the binding is loose before that. Yeah. And I so. think, like, the only thing I can think of why states are still enforcing a leash law is... Nobody's bought it. Like, didn't I mean, we had one for a long time, didn't we? And it, we, I think they eventually just stopped enforcing it because Ski Patrol realized it was pointless, and so they just didn't care anymore. Yeah, I mean, it's because it is pointless. It is so freaking pointless. So, uh, I yeah, it's so it's one of those things. I personally don't understand why it exists anymore, but you'll still get those people. Well, no, you know what? We do have the leash lock because Ski Cooper still enforces it. Ski, oh, they would. Which I really want to go to Ski Cooper and then just be like, 
I got a toe leash and a heel leash. <laughs> Where are we going nice. with this? See how they react to that. Yeah. Just look at them and be like, because I'm going to film that goddamn interaction. I'm yeah. going to post it on the fucking internet. The whole world will see. The whole world. Because I do want to go to Ski Cooper because they're going to get snow this year and I want to go ride the CAC because it's like, what, five bucks to ride the CAC? Yeah, it's cheap. It's real it's cheap. cheap. Yeah, no one goes there. So no one ever goes there. It's good. Yeah, so, I mean, come on. It's like pull in and go to the free parking lot of Copper or just keep driving to Leadville. Yeah. Just, you know, just go to Leadville. We can buy meth, too. Meth? Yeah. Okay, I can't do meth again. That's bad. Can't do it again. Don't do meth. No. No. So, yeah, leashes, leashes suck and, uh... That's all you people need to know about that. Yep. You want to take a spin on the wheel? I'm going to spin the wheel. Spin the wheel, make a deal. Power oh, foil! The power foil! Oh, this one's good. Oh my god. Some dumbass, and he's from Colorado, because oh, he tested it in oh, Steamboat. That hurts. Invented a mount that we, looked... We say invented loosely. Loosely. More or less, I think he liked the Fast and the Furious. A little too much. Too much. But it's basically a spoiler that goes on the nose of your board to allow lift. So your board will lift up above powder, but you had to drill it into your board. No, you glued it. Did you glue it? I thought, yeah. I thought it had mounts that you could drill it into your nose, too. They, well, from what I remember, uh, from looking up, re refreshing my memory on all these terrible ideas because I do my best to forget about them, is you had to epoxy it. Oh, board. that's right. And they were trying to get snowboard companies to work with them to put inserts in the nose, and they couldn't get anybody to do it. Shocking. Shocking. Let alone, it's a snowboard. Its base function will always be riding powder. That's, Some will ride it better than others. That's how we invented snowboarding, was powder. But it's not, like... Why would you need a spoiler on the front to give lift <laughs> yeah. when the board is going to, if you lean back, it's going to plane up on there anyway? Not to mention, they're like they're like three or four inches tall. So yeah. you have to get the nose of your board three to four inches below the snow before the power foil is actually going to do anything. And at that point, you're already submarining and you're dead. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, oh, my God. That was such a fucking bullshit. I, he reached out to me. I wrote an article on it. Which, the funny thing is, most of the things on this wheel I've actually seen in person and written an article on. Yeah. The joys of having a website for 10 years. Yeah. I remember it reached out to me, and I think my response was, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> like, and that was it. Nobody could think that's a good, like. Why I, would you think that was a good idea? On top, then you've got. my mind. Then you've got this object glued to your nose, which, if you hit it hit a root or anything in the snow going through the trees, that's ripped off or it's going to catch and pull you down. Yeah. You've got added weight on the nose now that doesn't, so now it's causing you, I mean, it probably was ounces realistically. Yeah, yeah, uh, drastic. But you've got this added weight on the nose to pull you back down. Think about heavy wet snow, it sticks to shit. Yes. Like it's just going to stick to that foil and then it is going to be a bunch of extra weight on your nose. Now the only thing that I could think this is good for is if you threw it up in your like Yakima rack, and you put it so that it was on the back of the car and the spoiler was there, you get yeah. better gas mileage getting to the mountain. Maybe. Maybe. Probably not. Probably it, not. It's just another thing that'll be. I think you're better off mounting your snowboard sideways. onto the yeah, sideways onto your trunk. Tilt it up a little bit, which I saw a Mustang driving today that had that exact situation. <laughs> God. <laughs> it's okay. Someone parked a Ford Ranger out in front the, uh, yesterday with a snowboard for a bumper. Yeah. Good old scum accounting. And it wasn't Everett. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyways, Powfoil. What? Why? Just why? And, I mean, that was just such a fucking shit idea. Like... At least, like, a lot of the other really bad ideas we're going to talk about, like, if you're a moron, then you might think it's a good idea. This one, I, like, even if you're a moron, you should be looking at that and going, no, you got to go too far into the snow for it to do anything, and then you, like, I set cannot your bindings fathom. Back. I, I, set your bindings back. Like, yeah. Lean back. Lean. Lean back. Lean back. That's all you got to do. All snowboards float. All snowboards float. All of them. Well, except for one we're going to talk about on this list. <laughs> true. true. Oh, but yeah. we'll get to that one. Yeah. Actually, there's a couple on the list that probably would never write about. There's more than one snowboard? Well, 
There's one that's does so. Oh god. That one. This is a topic that I've beaten like beyond death at this point. I've resurrected it. We've killed it again. This we can this is like to. this is like a, a Friday the thirteenth, Nightmare on Elm Street, or Halloween series at this point. Yeah. The movie just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. They just keep making these. Yes, it's so bad. Rotational bindings. I have seen every single version of a rotational binding ever made. And, and there was another guy this year at SIA, that fat kook yes. from Ohio that yep. was like trying to go around and yeah. talk to people. And his was just a plate and you had to drill a yeah, hole in yeah. your boot mm -hmm. and then your foot would sweat your boot. You would put your boot on this plate that swiveled because you drilled a hole in it. Like, no. What? And, he, and he, the best part was he broke it in front That's of the Marhart right. guys. And he's yeah. like, ah, it's, uh, where's the nearest Home Depot? I can fix this. Like, you're fixing this thing with fucking Home Depot parts? <laughs> yeah. Like, like I'm, I'm sorry, man. This isn't like putting some ducting in for your freaking uh, dryer. This, this is a snowboard part. Like, rotational bindings and every one of the people I've ever pissed off about it has had the same argument. They're like, no man, this really saves me. The only person that I can think, and I've heard this argument from a few people is amputees that have problems sure. skating. Like people that have like double valgus knee. I think that's what they're called. The, uh, that they use them sometimes to skate like the adaptive guys. I'll let that slide because half of those adaptive people are ex military or something. And I'm just like, you do you, man. You're out here. You're not hurting anyone. But when these guys market it to people like me, they're like, no, man, it'll make it easier. Because I had to ride the chair with one of these dumb fucks one oh, time. I had to ride the chair with one of them. Oh, my God. Powder day. Powder day. So I'm on peak 10 riding the Falcon chair yeah. at Breck. And I come, I come through the line, and I'm trying to get on by myself because I don't like riding with people. And we've already established that I don't really like riding with people. And these three guys that did not speak English, I'm uh, pretty sure they were like South American, Chilean or whatever, which is fine. They're speaking Spanish, so I can kind of roughly understand what they're doing. But these guys, one of them has it, and I watch, and he turns, and he almost falls over trying to turn with uh, it. Yeah, of course. And goes to grab me, so I karate chop him. I'm just like, Poof! and I look at him, and I'm like, no. And so we ride up, and I'm, like, the whole time, it's supposed to make it easier on your knee, and he still wanted the goddamn bar down. <laughs> I was just like, oh my god, you, you want the fucking footrest and you got your facing forward. Like, I don't get, just, no! So anyways, we go to get off, and the, like, release mechanism, which is hooked to a leash, basically, oh, starts to tangle around him, and he starts to fall into his friends, and they all teeter back over to me. And so I did the next best thing. Like, I had stood up and was letting the back of the chair push me. Yeah. I sat back down on the chair. So they fell and just picked myself up and pushed him off me and ended up uh, the ch like the chair, they went under the chair. And then like at this point I'd gone, cause there's a long flat section on Falcon. Yeah. It started to hit the turn. I jumped off at the turn and just rode away. Yeah. And I was just like, you fucking kooks. Like you can't, like this is literally one of the worst things. And it's always someone that feels like we need to save people's knees and snow. And I was like, what are you a knee surgeon? Like, what are you? What? I, most of the people that blow their knee, like it, it's not from a twisting motion. Usually, it's usually from a, a gnarly. It's impact. It's, impact. it's yeah. just psh, my knee on each time that I've done something has been an impact. It's never been a twist, a cartwheel. Mm -hmm. Every time I've heard, like, every time I tweet my knee on a snowboard, it's from impact. Impact. Yeah. Like I don't have meniscuses. Meniscus. 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 I. Meniscus. I. I don't have them. I, <laughs> like my doctor is like. You're not in pain? And I was like, no. And he's like, then you don't need surgery. And I was like, oh, I'm going to need it later. That's that's why everyone needs to join Angry Snowboarder VIP. <laughs> oh, we should have a knee level. Knee? Oh, knee replacement <laughs> level. There you go. 20 grand. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, rotational bindings. And I've seen every kind of version of this from the simple plates to, like, a whole new intricate binding design. Remember the bungee ones? They were like attached to like this elastic cord so that they like they had some resistance to pull you back, but like yeah, they both moved and there was like a uh, I don't know my the one uh, I, the one I hate the most right now is probably Broco because they're yeah. based they're based out of Vale I think and they take ads in the local paper yeah. and someone needs to proofread their ads because it's full of typos. Mm -hmm. Um, but those ones they're, they're they're 
They're designed to, as you ride, to move, and there's no lock. It'll spin a full 360, and their thing is like, you can do new inventive tricks, and I was like, or you can blow your knee out. Yeah, like, like that is how you're going to blow your knee out from rotation, is riding rotational bindings. Have you ever seen their promo video? The dude is yeah. riding a like, first-year set of nitro bindings. Mm-hmm. Like They weren't ratings. They were the old nitros that looked like the old Prestons, like big old leg bolts through the side to adjust the heel cup low back. Like, I mean, where the fuck did they, like those things are where he got them from. But why would you show off an ancient ass binding? And that's the thing is like these guys, it's always funny when you ever look at the products that they mount them on. It's usually a skate banana, which tells me that they don't know how to fucking snowboard. And they usually have like an old Burton mission or custom binding. That's like 10 years old on there. Yep. And I'm like, really? Really? Because they're completely disconnected from snowboarding. So Otherwise, they would know these are terrible ideas. ideas. And it, I mean, if, if you just... But if you would just Google rotational binding, you would see all these other ideas. Which reminds me, the domain name rotationalbinding.com is available or was available. I can't remember if I bought that one. <laughs> I'm one of my mass binding sprees of domain names. Let's but hope I, so. I should go buy that one and then just link it to this this literal video. So it just plays this video yeah. constantly, yeah. over and over. That might be what I do. The, um, the biggest thing for me with these things is I cannot figure out why they keep coming back. There's never been, like, the first thing you do when you come up with that idea is you Google it to see if somebody else has already done it. And you're going to see, if you Google rotational bindings, how many others have been out there. And then you go and look to yourself, huh. All these have existed. None of them are available. Maybe that's because none of them have been successful. Maybe that's because it's a fucking terrible idea. The other thing is it's like almost every year to 18 months, one of them pops up. Yeah. It's it's like clockwork. It's consistent. And I just cannot fathom what is so appealing to be able to move your foot on top of your board. Like, what what is so I, I, about I, that? I love that their argument is like you can't skate and I was like I can skate perfectly fine I can skate, I can skate, skate with any foot strapped in front foot back foot it doesn't matter I will skate and I have no problem with it I granted I ride a lot more than people but I mean are you trying to market this to people that don't even know the fundamentals of snowboarding right, right. like I, with, and then if you're doing that it's good it's got to be so fucking hard to ride those things on top of the fact it's one plate so you're yeah. you're you're not even levels so you're your anatomy is thrown off your ana- your uh, the, your asymmetry of your body, so you're actually pushing your hip up higher, which throws off the alignment, which will cause more back pain. Yep. In there, the back pain, hip pain, hip knee pain. pain. I it, for something that's supposed to relieve knee pain, it actually will cause more pain. Yeah. And I I just I every time I see someone with one of these things too, I'm just looking at them. I was like, I would never ride a chairlift with them. Because that, that's the that's like my telltale sign is with snowboarding. Would I ride a chairlift with this person? <laughs> yeah. And if I look at him and I'm like, no, it's usually a bad idea. Mm-hmm. And I just, for the life of me, cannot understand it. But I want to know from you snowboarders of the internet, have any of you been suckered into buying one of these fucking things? Because I want to know why you bought it. Or your friend. Or your friend. Yeah. Like, I want to know why. I just really want to know why, because I guarantee you, by the time this video comes out, five more companies will have done a rotational bite. Yep. Companies you've never heard of, but yep. five more companies. And it's just God forsakenly. It awesome. will never be a good idea. No. So if you're watching this and you thought, oh, rotating my binding on top of my board with a lever, that's a good idea. No, it's not. Never. Never a good idea. I mean, if you're going to do it, just adapt, just market it towards adaptive sports. That would be the only way I would do it. And if you literally only marketed it towards adaptive sports, I would not shit on it. I'd be like, I understand that deal. Because but work with a PT but, person, work with an orthopedist, so, somebody in that realm to make sure that you're doing it right. And you will need some sort of limit on the movement. That's true. And it's funny because I worked with a kid whose uh, stepmom – is an adaptive athlete because she's missing uh, one of her legs below the knee. And they had tried to get her to endorse it. And she said it was one of the worst things she ever used. (laughs) And I was like, Oh, that's not good. So fuck these things. Yep. Fuck them. All 
All right, Wheel, let's see what you got for me. Launch binding. Yeah! Oh, okay. So these things are still on Kickstarter, and people still haven't gotten them, but they fund them. They're like the goddamn face hugger. So it's, uh, I've ridden them. You've ridden them. We've ridden no, them. No, I haven't ridden them. You didn't ride them? No, I didn't ride I them. Thought I, I thought I made you ride them. No, I rode the, uh, um, the Bonhiever. I made you ride those. Oh, we'll talk about those later. Yeah. But, uh, so the, the launch binding, for those of you that don't know, actually was not invented by launch. It was, I believe, SP before they became SP gadgets when they were making subways. Oh, yeah. Uh, I believe. I can't really remember I because I try so. to forget these things. Yeah. Uh, but they're like a bad case of herpes and they still come back to haunt you. I sure do. And what it was is it's a binding that opens up fully and there's a little like step down lever or crossbar that goes under your heel and it's hard. Yeah. And you step in it when it does, the bindings flip up and they're supposed to hit each other and then the ladder is supposed to feed into the ratchet and lock down. Then you can just adjust it and tighten it back down. So it looks like a face hugger. These things are fucking horrible. The you get a hard spot right behind your heel. It hurts. I haven't even looked at the review of them that I did, but basically I reviewed them because people always tell me that I shit on products without riding them. So I actually wrote it. <laughs> I actually wrote it. You cannot say anything about it. But I know uh, one of my friends, Dave, pointed out to me that it's still on Kickstarter or Indiegogo or crowdfunding. It still is. And the people have, they're still refining it and the guy, ha people haven't gotten their product or if they have, they uh -huh. just got it. I, I haven't really paid attention like the last yeah. month or two, but you know, this guy's trying to launch it, ironically, because yeah, the company's yeah. launched. Nah. And it's it's fucking atrocious. It is so bad. Like there's a gap in your ankle strap. Yeah. Right where you need ankle Support. strap. Yeah. It's it it's they're not like an actual strap, like we would go over the end. They're like ovals. Yeah, and they're like a, a pod on one side and a pod, pod on, on the, the other, other side, and they end up with a gap, gap in the middle. Like, yeah, and it just doesn't doesn't work so well. And it, they're, they're just fucking garbage. And they're like, no, it makes everything faster to strap in. I was like, no, no, Dude. no, it doesn't. If you want faster, just get step ons. Get step on or get flow. Get like, flow. I don't understand the obsession with. Get into your binds faster. Step on makes sense. There's a market for that. I get step on, and it does. It works. It works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. Like they pretty close to the way they say it too. I think they overmarketed it a little bit, but why wouldn't they? But the rest of the shit out there, like if you're trying to get into your binds fast, your options are step on, flow. K2 Cinch, Cinch, which... Uh, does Gnu still do their brain intro? Oh, they do, yeah. Which, again, kind of same thing. They work, they ride. If I had to ride them, I could. I wouldn't choose to. I think Flow's yeah. a better system. But it's not bad. So if you, anything, made, anything made by Fast Tech in, in that sense. There's yeah. a few other brands that are coming out of that. But if it's Fast Tech, they're rideable. I prefer other stuff. I think they're probably the me, my least favorite of the rear entry stuff in Fast Entry. But that's all there needs to be. This whole, all of these ideas, there's a couple others out there that are floating around that have these movable straps or hinge straps. Like, do you remember the the Python or whatever? It's from some Korean knockoff brand. I don't know. A bunch of people got really, I think they were Korean. They got really angry and left a bunch of hate comments on the website telling me that I shouldn't review the product before I shit on it. I was like, well, this isn't a review. This is a critique. There's a difference. Yeah. And, uh, Review would mean I actually wrote it. Right. Critique means I looked at it and said, oh, fuck no. Mm -hmm. But then there's that other one, Struth. From, yes, that's the other one I was thinking of. But they got, I think they got a cease and desist from Flow because they were trying to yeah. use actual patented technology. Right. So, but they, these fucking things, I, and they're heavy as fuck. Yeah, like, and that's the other crazy thing. And you thing got is, more moving parts. Exactly. Like, that's what I was just going to say is bindings have gotten simple. And that's good because simpl simple things don't break. So you're going to start adding a bunch of hinges, a bunch more hardware, a bunch more shit. No, stop. That doesn't make things better. It makes things worse. Yeah. It, it, the thing with bindings is the simplicity of it, that you understand a toe strap, a heel strap, a high back that folds down, less moving parts. You know, you need the minimal amount of moving parts. And these guys are adding more moving parts. So instead of having just a ladder, and a ratchet, you know, now you've got this side piece that flips down, so that means your chassis is double wide with a hinge, mm -hmm. so you've got 
two hinges now that could break. You've got a lever across the back that you step on that you could break, you know, or it'll come dislodged in, I mean, heavy snow. Powder? Yeah. You are not like you're fucked. Yeah. Yeah. And that, yeah. Imagine trying to step into those in power. Yeah. Nightmare. Nightmare. Yeah. Just not, not fun. Those things are fucking hideous. And it is such a bad idea. And it's such bullshit. And I, I will guarantee that the owner of launch will reach out to me after seeing this video. Probably. I wrote their boards. They weren't bad. Yeah. I remember that. Didn't we have, we had a friend that, did they ride for him? Did we catch him? Which Kevin? Black Kevin. Oh, uh, they, yeah, they tried yeah, to give him like a board. Or, or something like they that. They gave him a board. He, yeah. He's sponsored because he oh, got a free okay. snowboard. I didn't know what level it was. I didn't I know. Level. I don't know. I haven't talked to Kevin in forever. Yeah. yeah. He's dead to me. And I'm okay with that. It's one less Kevin, which is actually the uh, main export or highest yeah. concentration. Highest concentration of Kevins is in the U.S. There are, what is it, upwards of 27 Kevins per square mile in the U.S. in yes. metropolitan areas. Yes, according to yeah. The Onion, which is a very Onion. credible news source. More credible than Twitter. Yes. So. <laughs> Anyways, Anyways. We're going to move on to the next subject. Okay. This is one of my personal favorites. <laughs> Dual boards. It is the snowboard equivalent to snowblades. Uh, you have two miniature snowboards, one on each foot, so you still go down the hill sideways like you normally would, but you have your nose kick, and then binding, and then tail kick, and then that's it on that foot. And then on your other foot, you have another one. And I cannot begin to describe how dumb of an idea that is. And one of the reasons this is one of my favorites is because I've met the dude multiple times. He's ridden, he's ridden at Brack a lot. Ridden they, Keystone. They used to send like groups to the Dew Tour to be like on hill models yeah. for him and shit and do yeah. tours or whatever. I think that's actually one of the one of the times I ran into him was at Dew Tour, and uh, I think it was the one at Dew Tour was he was in the line. And started chatting me up for whatever reason. I don't know why he targeted me. Uh, you're you're very meek looking in your gear. I guess. I don't know. I'm going to buy you a puffy. But the thing, I mean, so maybe, I don't know. Maybe he thought I was a chick at first. Because back then, I think that's when I was wearing a bunch of Holden. So I was wearing really tight pants. Oh. So maybe he thought I was a chick. I don't know. Either way, uh, he was trying to sell me on him. And I just stopped him about 13 seconds into his spiel. And I just said... Dude, you know what? You follow me through the park, you hit every feature I hit, and I'll buy a set. And this was so long ago, I don't remember what his excuse was, but he gave me some bullshit excuse as to why he couldn't. And the real reason is because they're useless, and you can't ride them in park. You can't ride them in POW. That was another day. Another POW day where, again, I ran into the same dude, and again, he tried to convince me to buy these things. So I told him, basically the same story. I said, you follow me, you keep up from... Top all the way down, I will buy a set. Same story. Gave me some bullshit excuse. Why he fucking could it? The real answer is because those things are fucking stupid. So I had a friend that did staging for Dew Tour, and she found two pairs of them that they left behind for people, and her response was to throw them in the garbage. Good. That's where they belong. They still had bindings on. She's like, I didn't even take the bindings off because they were like old Burton customs that were like eight years old. She just whipped them right in the trash. Again, like we were talking about with the rotational bindings in one of the other segments, people that come up with these stupid ideas always riding old shit. Oh, yeah. My favorite interaction was preseason park at Keystone. I was with my friend Tyler Pence and... A bunch of other people, but Tyler skis, and we were just sitting around shooting the shit, and this kid comes waddling over, because that's how he was with these things on his feet. He waddled. Yeah. Yeah. He had that reflective, circular, circular reflective Sean White jacket. Oh, yeah. He had bought it at Ski Rex for $16, because Zara, yeah. our friend Zara, had sold it to him. She literally remembered the kid, she was there with me. He came over to me, he's like, what's up, guys? And I was like, what's up, nerd? And, uh... He looks at me and he's like, these things are pretty sick, huh? And I was like, I mean, if you want to blow your knee, they're great. And he looked at me and he's like, what? And I was like, these things are a fucking death trap for your knee. You're going sideways down a hill instead of facing forward. I was like, with a non-releasable binding. I was like, the old ski blades had non-releasable bindings and were one of the leading causes of tib-fib plateau fractures. Because they would catch and then just crack and crack. 
and you would end up with a tricompound fracture mm -hmm. or worse. And Spiral femoral fractures. Yes. And so he looked at me and he's like, no, these things are sick. And I was like, oh, yeah? Go hit some rails with me. He's like, well, I've been hitting these boxes over here. These were literally ride yeah, on boxes. Yep. Yeah, you know which ones I'm talking about. The, oh, dis yeah. the disco box, which yep. is really fun to do like a tripod butter onto. Yeah. Yeah, things like maybe an inch off the ground, if that. It's pretty much just a sheet of it's Lexan. A pad. It's a sheet of Lexan on the snow. So he's sitting there, and he just keeps going on and on, and I just keep belittling him, and he's so dumb he couldn't catch it. And the other thing was he was drinking a 25-ounce can of Corona, just, like, slamming it like like it was nothing. I was just like, okay, Corona in a can, whatever. Um, but, yeah, he's slamming it, and finally he looks at me. He's like, dude. People didn't like snowboarding when it first started, and you guys got shit on, and you should be, like, on my side. And he just kept talking down to me. He's like, you don't even know. And I looked at him, and I was like, son, I do remember that. My brother remembers that. I remember fighting 50-year-old dudes in the lift line when I was 16 in the mid-90s. Like, because Western New York is 7 to 12 years behind the times on everything. And he, I, I was just like, why don't you just shut the fuck up? Because these things are pieces of shit. Go over there, hit a couple features, and prove to me they can do it. And you know what he did? He fucking did a split on these things because one foot kicked out the other yeah. way. It just, he ended up getting shame trained off the hill. Yeah. And it was the funniest thing. But I was like, and it, what was it? I think one year at Breckenridge, they came up to me. And I just was like, no, I'm not this, and just walked away. God, that's what I need to start doing. I, I do that, or, or I'll just do sign language at them yeah. and just walk away. And they're just like, but those things were such a fucking shit idea and I don't think they exist anymore I hope they don't but you know where they started don't you no Big Bear yeah <laughs> that makes sense a lot of these really terrible ideas come out of SoCal I don't know why <laughs> it's like the, it's like the goddamn Bromuda Triangle of bad is. ideas it's not the Bermuda Triangle, it's the Bromuda. Because yeah. it's always some bros that create it. It is, every time. It's oh my god. That bro that's revolutionizing snowboarding. Or something, or going to create something. Probably funded by his rich trust of Fire and Dead. Probably has a house in Malibu. Yeah. If you want to just blow a bunch of money in snowboarding, you could just sign up for Angry Snowboarder VIP. I'll just set a $20,000 a month tier. Yeah, we can do that for you. We can do that for you. Yeah. Um, it's fucking so bad. I fucking hate these things. Like, that's just, that's, talk about straining on your knees. Because your trailing foot is always going to have pressure on the inside of your knee. Yeah. you're always having to bring it back in, bring, bring it, it back, back in. in. I, I, just, why? It, it, you literally mounted a ski blade sideways that doesn't release. And that, like, and that's the other thing, is I look at these things, and I always try to think to myself, like, where was the thought process to go from, I want to create something for snowboarding, and then you land there? Like, did you just see ski blades and say, I want ski blade version of for snowboarding? And if you did, why? Ski blades are stupid. I mean, they're... No, they're stupid. There's no redeeming value to ski blades. So why would you try to create that for snowboarding? It's okay. <sighs> I am friends with the guy that got the first gold medal on ski blades at the X Games. Was it the only one? No, he did went it? Twice. Did it twice. But he was skiing for Dina Star, and they told him that they would give him a buttload of money to do it. So he's got an X Games gold medal, I think, from that. Or maybe, maybe he got silver. I can't remember. I don't know. What I do know is that he's had like five knee replacements. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go. If you want to ride dual boards, you're going to get a knee replacement. Yeah. So, fuck those things. Yes, yes. They're awful. This is an idea that I mocked years ago. I mean, SIA was still in Vegas when I mocked this, because I've seen it in person, and it has come back, and they've changed the name. But this is the F-17 Cheetah, which is now called the Whip, yep. and it's been making the rounds on the internet again. It is literally the worst design over-engineered snowboard, so it's got cutouts in the middle for power channel distri distribution, and then it's got a built-in riser plate that goes out and does everything. And I met the guys that designed it. They're Japanese, and they were looking for funding when I met them 10 years ago. And they still haven't got funding, but they're trying to sell them. And it's got like a $1,700 price tag or something absurd. Yeah, of course. Like, like solid carbon fiber. Carbon fiber. And I remember the first question I asked them was like, how's this thing doing powder? And they were like, it doesn't. 
You literally designed a fucking snowboard that cannot ride powder. Like, you have to try to do that. How the hell did you fucking succeed at doing that? Yeah. Why did you... And So this new video that they've got coming out is like, it will make you a more revolutionary rider. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure the dude grabs Tindy right on the first hit. And just... Just... Yes, please. Oh, my God. It's, it, it's the most over-engineered snowboard that... Can't, like, they literally said it's only good for riding groomers. They're like, chunder snow, no. Uneven terrain, no. Yeah, because there's a hole in the middle of it. Yeah. A giant hole in the middle of the snowboard. Giant hole. Oh, exactly. So you can't ride over uneven terrain because it's going to go into the hole. Yeah, it's just going to spray up into your face. It looks like Batman's snowboard. It really does. Like, yeah. But maybe if he was using it to jump out of the bat plane and sky surf. Yeah. That's Batman Sky Surfboard. That's what it really looks that's, like. Yeah. This thing is fucking horrendous. Or it looks like it'd be in like a really cheesy 90s ad for like Lamborghini and driving your Lamborghini up to the mountain and they want to be edgy and put a snowboard on top of the Lamborghini instead of skis and that's the board that they picked. I feel like they should have ridden this in the Point Break remake. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this looks like it should have been ridden in Triple X. Actually, yes, that is exactly where this board should be. It's yeah, Triple X. It is. Yup. Uh, Xander what? Cage needs to get on. This oh no no thing. no no no! This isn't good enough for Vin Diesel. Not good enough. Oh. This gets Ice Cube. Ice Cube. Yeah. Oh, that makes way more sense. Yeah. Yup. But yep. but not but only if it's a straight to video on demand release, and not to one of the good services. <laughs> I'm talking like PlayStation View, maybe. Yeah. You know, like one of the more. In- Inferior ones. That's how uh, bad this is. Uh-huh. And I, it but doesn't even have full wrap edges. Did you know that? No. Yeah, and the inside cutouts, I'm pretty sure, don't even have edges. Well, I would have, I would actually, if they're not complete morons, the inside edge should be rolled up so it doesn't catch I don't think it was things. when I Probably saw it. Not. When I saw it, I don't think it was. No. It looked like it was just CNC'd out. Yeah. But it was so fucking. Bad. And it's heavy. I believe it is. It's I think I asked him. What, I think I asked him what the weight was, and I think they told me it was like fifteen pounds. <laughs> so it's twice the weight of a regular snowboard. Actually, more like triple because most snowboards in like a one fifty six weigh about like five point two pounds. Oh yeah. If, unless right, then, yeah. unless they're American made, right. and even even then, like yeah. American made, six, that, six and a half. Not even. I think they're like five point eight, maybe six pounds. Yeah. Unless you get like some really shitty factory, but this thing. You build a snowboard that can't ride powder. I, I think one of the other things I asked him, because I, I felt bad because only because there was a language barrier and their English was so bad. Sure, sure. But I asked him, I was like, how is this thing when you ride trees? And they're like, you don't ride trees, it will hook up. Like if you hit a root or something, right. they're saying it would hook up. Yeah. And the fact that it came back, I saw it before I left the group, but on the history of snowboarding. Someone, some guy posted it, it got roasted, and I don't blame him. It should just get fucking roasted. Yeah, this, yeah. this is a bad idea. I think they're trying to crowdfund it. Do not crowdfund this. If you're going to just spend money on crowdfunding, join Angry Snowboard or VIP. Yes, do that. Just do that. I, I think I'm going to make a crowdfunding tier and be like, you get no perks or rewards, but you get the fuzzy, warm feeling of knowing you gave us 200 bucks. Yeah. Something bullshit like that. Yeah. This thing, I can You've never seen it in person, have you? No. I thought you were no. with me that essay, but no, because I never no, took I you to Vegas. Yeah, I never did. Yeah, we never took you. Yeah, I think it was it was either the last year or the second to the last year it was in Vegas. And I remember So what you're telling me is it killed SA Vegas. We have this to blame for well, SA Yes, Vegas. because they didn't bang a hooker and get scurvy and die, which they should have. But I remember I met those guys, but I had an appointment with a girl. I, it was like the I think it was Lauren. I think it was Lauren, at least, that was working for Burton. And I just remember walking in, just laughing. She said, what are you laughing? I was like, I saw the worst fucking idea. And I just proceeded to tell her how bad it was. And she said, hey, man, they're trying. Like, she was trying to be, like, all polite. And I was just like, she was trying to be I, I remember looking at her and going, no. This isn't like you guys built something that stupid. This is someone coming in from outside of snowboarding trying to say they're going to fix it when they don't even grasp the basics. Like, I mean, if they wanted to come in and make a carbon fiber snowboard, sure, fine. You're not the first company to do that. That's great. Won't be the last. Won't be the last. Okay. Gotcha. Gonna do it. So that's fine. Then, let's see. Oh, you want to go in and 
maybe you maybe you've got a new technology you want to sell to somebody. Fine. Don't be the first, don't be the last. These guys literally wanted to redesign snowboarding and then dictate that snowboarding is only riding perfectly groomed runs. You no. I like riding powder. I love riding powder. If the rest of my life was nothing but riding powder, I would be okay with that. I'd be pretty okay with that. I would miss a groomer every now and then, but and then I'd go to a pal's last and get right again. The only time I want grip like the way I look at it. I could ride powder the rest of my life if it was like the Beaver Creek scenario where they have the 24 hour cat train. So, at the end of the day, I can just get on a groomer, my legs are tired, and know it's perfect run all the way back to the base area. There you go. I want to be that rich. Yeah. I want to buy a slip side house. You can make us that rich. You could. You could. You won't. You won't. I dare you. We're going to be poor the rest of our lives. Let's go. Unless we win the lottery. I might win the lottery. You didn't buy a ticket. I didn't buy a ticket. But you know what? We still get more funding than the whip. Ah! And that's where we're ending this segment. Yeah. Gonna take a spin on the wheel? Spin on the wheel! Power yes! Oh, this will be fun. This is here to be a good one. You're an engineer. Yeah, well, kind of more. I was. I was. Yeah. You built snowboards. Yep. You've ridden snowboards. A few. How do you feel about the power days? And just so people understand, this is a slip-on tip cover to turn your regular twin tip into a powder board. It slides on, and basically you slip the nose up through, and then it extends it, and it adds taper, which is really weird because it doesn't fully match the side cut. No. But it will mount onto any board, so they claim up to X width, and it will suddenly turn your twin tip into a powder board. I've got a few powder twins. I'm okay. I used to ride at 160, actually 165 pounds when I was working at Signal because I had muscle. A 151 Signal OG was my power deck. And you know what? It worked. And that's freaking tiny. Why? Do you, no one needs this. All snowboards float. We've mentioned that a couple times already in this podcast, this month. All snowboards float. Why? Except the whip. But yeah. <laughs> uh, can't float on the whip. Or dual boards, really, but I wouldn't call those snowboards. So. They're sideways uh, monoskis. Sideways monoskis. Um, or sideways ski blades. Yeah. So uh, that's what I'm not. Yeah, sideways monoski, that's, a, that's, a that's, alpine, that's an alpine board. That's an alpine board. Yeah. Uh, like, I, I can hardly even think of Terrible things to say about this is how bad this is. Like, you're, so you're slipping this thing on there that now you have catch points if you're going to try and ride switch. No, no, in their videos, so oh, I ride switch. I know, I saw, but it well. looked a little sketchy. And let's be honest, like, you're slipping something on top of your snowboard. It has to be wider than your snowboard, snowboard. for that to work. So you create a shelf right, right there, like a step yeah. on your side cut. So, um, so switch is going to feel terrible. And... You can maybe you'd be able to actually ride Switch, but it might feel good. And then he says that there's metal edges on it up, you know, up top, and that it matches your side cut. I don't know if he's aware, but most snowboards don't have the same side cut. Every snowboard has a different side cut. So, which one did you match it to? Because I guess that's the only board that it's actually going to match to. Because Side cuts are all different. So your turns are going to feel like shit. Your initiation is going to be terrible because the front part of your side cut is just going to have this weird abrupt change from the dumb thing that you put on top of your board into the actual snowboard. Uh, Where are you going this? Like, well, I mean, that's it. Like, the, the fact that he's trying to claim that there is a real side cut on this thing that flows into the board. No, there's not. It's a terrible idea. It's not a good design. And you're bolting it on top of your board. So now your feet are uneven. So now you have your back foot is lower than your front foot. So causing pressure in your knees, on your hips, on your back, because now you're not standing level on top of your board. And on top of that, now you've added a bunch of weight to the front of your board. Well, the thing that I looked at was like, because your nose of your board kicks up underneath it. So you basically got 
two noses yeah. going in there. So you have this area where if you slam into something, it's probably just going to break. Right. Like the structural integrity. Oh, uh, yeah. And on top of that, you have a higher chance of just breaking your board because this thing is on there. Yeah. Um, you know what the weird thing was? They were asking for $32,555. They got $24,433. Do you know what I could do with that money? Jeez. I, I could hire a full-time editor. Yeah. Uh, it, it blows my mind that people thought this was a good idea. And I just remember looking at it going, you ride this in pow in the trees, and you hit a tree, it's going to break. Yeah, it's going to blow up. You're, 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 you're going to have just too many flex points and crumple zones mm -hmm. that it's just going to crack and snap. On top of the fact, like we've mentioned, all snowboards can ride pow. And then it just, no. like, And, and their whole thing is like, oh, it's tough to... Take a snowboard, two snowboards with you on vacation. Not so I've bad. literally flown out of the Reno airport with 15 snowboards in a board bag. Yeah. And yes, it was definitely over their allotted weight limit. So you know what you do? You put your backpack down and when you put your board bag on the scale, you rest your backpack underneath it to release most of the weight. You can trick their scale and they will not catch it. So you do not pay. But taking two snowboards is roughly 12 pounds. Roughly. 12 pounds, one pair of bindings, because let's be honest, if you're going on vacation, you're not just going to be like, oh, I'm going to just chain up my pow board out here and go up and ride the park for a couple laps or vice versa. Right. It's it's not. And it, even if you wanted to have two sets of bindings, you can still get, like I got a board bag in my closet right now that has like nine snowboards and I think five pairs of bindings in it. You can get a bunch of stuff in a board bag. Right. What do you mean? You, it's hard to take two boards. It's actually or, very or easy. They, they're also trying to be like, you don't know what kind of boards you're going to need for the conditions. I'll be honest with you. At this point, if I travel somewhere in my one everyday snowboard, which my everyday snowboard, I can ride anything on it. Yeah. It might not be the best at powder. It might not be the best at groomers. It's a jack-of-all-trades Swiss Army Knife board. I can literally ride that on anything. But they're trying to say, I mean, the one thing that they had going for them was they kept the price at 150 or less. I think it was like 149. They at least got the price right. And I, I would say the other piece is that he was riding the sketchy tank for ride burnout. At least that's a good board. Oh. But that doesn't really help the product at all. No. <laughs> it doesn't. No. I mean, well, it was current product at least. The other yeah. thing is when it slips on, you're going to have a rise in that front foot, which is going to throw off your, your asymmetry and yeah. your anatomy. So you're you're going to have a leg that's pushed up higher, which right. is going to put more stress on that hip joint. Not to mention, at that point, you're now, effectively, to keep things level, you're actually pushing the front of your board down. down. The, I mean, granted, they're trying to make it for a pow day, but let's so let's be honest. You're not riding bottomless pow on a pow day. You, at some point, you're cutting a cat track. You're mm -hmm. cutting a groomer. Mm -hmm. Like, I wish I could... I would love to be able to be like, I rode top to bottom pow, and it was untouched the whole way. That's just not how it fucking happens. No. It's, it's not. It's not like we're at bald-faced. It's not like we're... Heli skiing, heli riding, doing any of that. It's not like we're at Silverton. You're, we're getting off chairs. I like riding flying couches, okay? I'm lazy. Mm -hmm. I, I don't so, like yeah. And if I, and the other thing is like, oh, you can take it in the backcountry. I was like, why don't you just get a fucking split board? Yeah, like if you're going to go into the backcountry, get a backcountry setup, maybe. Like, what? Didn't this thing also win an award at ISPO? Oh, God, I hope not. I think it was for innovation. And that just tells me it's like these people just don't understand what innovation really is. There's yeah. no added actual benefit to any snowboarder with this. No. Um, I was looking for reviews, and the only ones I could find were from the Aussies on snowboard.com, the new version of snowboard.com. Mm -hmm. And they hadn't even ridden it. They were just hyping it up, and I was like, you got a free product. Yeah, just, yeah, I'll just get it. Once or something. I'm just like, yeah. son of a bitch. Like, this is awful. <sighs> I just, I don't. Just slam your bindings back. Yeah, exactly. Literally. Just. And the other big thing for me as far as making things float in deep snow, I think sinking your tail is almost more important than floating your nose. Because if you can get your tail to sink, that's naturally going to push your nose up. Yeah. So, again, slam your bindings back, shrink your tail, you lengthen your nose, boom, done. Yeah, exactly. What, so. what do you need this thing for? I. Because slamming your bindings back, that's free. It's true. I mean, literally, if you're going to buy one snowboard, I think it should be a directional twin. Yeah, agreed. Because then you can ride everywhere. You can ride everywhere. You can ride park. You can ride a groomer. You can or ride power. This new 
pseudo wave of like non symmetrical twins. Non symmetrical, which I own one. Yeah, Ooh. I own one. What do you have? You've got the Zoya. I've got the, uh, well, I guess it's a non symmetrical directional twin. I have Killer. Oh, that's right. You yeah. got the Killer. I've got a Brewster. Yeah, you got a Brewster. I got Spain. a Killer. I've got the uh, Clovis. Yeah. Yeah. Like those. Yeah. Non symmetrical. The Z twin? Z twin, yep. The non symmetrical. Big nose twins. Twins, yeah. Ride one of those if you're really concerned about having a board that rides like a pow deck and it can also hit hard. Yeah, because that way contact points, contact points, twin, and twin. then you just got a longer nose. Smaller tail. Like, it's fine. Or there's plenty of boards out there that float great and are even true twin. But let's just, let's theoretically look at it because, like, the average days that a snowboarder spends on hill, I believe, is now seven. Mm -hmm. They're probably not getting powder days. But if they are, they're probably only getting two powder days. How much is it to rent a board for a day? About fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. I'd rather just go spend fifty bucks and ride a board. Get a ride board, a real power board. board. Real power board. Yeah, something I don't have to worry about slamming in, doing it, dealing with having to get longer. That's the other thing. Longer hardware. You're going to need longer hardware yep. because you're raising the board, the binding up. So now mm -hmm. it's not threading as much. So you're going to have uneven hardware in, in your board. So you're going to have shorter hardware in the back and longer hardware in the front. So. This, this whole thing is just, it, it perplexes me that people would just create some bullshit like that. Like, why? Yeah. Why? I just, because you couldn't lean back. So I want to know if any of you snowboarders of the internet have bought this thing, because they did sell a few, I guess. Yeah. But, or did you try to fund this product? Because if you did, I want to punch you. Get your money back and give it to us. Yes. We'll take all your monies. In case you haven't gathered from this podcast, no <laughs> poor shit. This poor shit. We need your money. Damn it. Literally couldn't get funding for a car. I have like an 800 credit score. Still couldn't get funding. I need a car. So, hey, Aaron, I got a question for you. Okay. You ever been riding down the hill and just felt like things were too dark? No. I haven't either. But apparently someone has because LED snowboards are a thing and they have been and they keep being a thing. I don't like it. There's multiple companies. Oh, I know. And that's... Have you ever seen the battery pack for those things and how big it is? No. It's so, the one I saw was like probably six inches by four inches by two inches. And they claimed that it, the battery weighed almost five pounds and it had that to mount, right. mount behind or in front of your back foot. And then you had to plug the power pack in and then it would power the LEDs in there and they could change and you could program them to do mm -hmm. tricks and you know all this other stuff and then they had one that went on the top sheet and they're like it will tell you where to put toe pressure and heel pressure and all this shit and i was like so you're distracting people from looking downhill <laughs> so he's staring at your i'm like <laughs> i'm waiting for one of these things to cause an epileptic seizure yeah right like there's they're they're just bad idea in every direction like every direction the only cool one was it the Every Third Thursday where they could change the graphic? Yeah, but that, that was an Every Third Thursday. It was an Every Third Thursday, on. and it was still more of a snowboard, and it was a project for a movie, not a project to sell sell anything. Like it was, it yeah, it, it was a media stunt. Stunt, for because yeah. that's what Every Third Thursday was. Yeah, and I just why why? I my favorite was the company that approached me one time. They so they emailed me. And they're like, hey, man, we're doing LED snowboards, and we'd love to make one for you. You just got to send us a board. And I was like, wait, what? Send you a board? And they're like, yeah. So what they would do was they would deconstruct it. They would pull it apart and then repress it. And I was looking at it, and they were putting screws right by the sidewall at the edge, drilling right in and just putting, like, little finishing screws or whatever it was to hold it. And yeah. Because they they'd have to cut the core right. to fit the LED in there and everything. And I was like, wait, so you guys – are taking snowboards apart and putting them back together, you've literally demolished that board. Like, the warranty's gone, everything's gone. Like, everything that seals that board together and gives it life is gone. Yeah. You're, you've you made a necrotic and snowboard. And that sounds like more work than just making a new snowboard. It does. It had to have been. And so they, these guys, they were all about it, and I just was like, this is fucking stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. I'm pretty sure I do know what I'm talking about. Like, this is This is a perfect example of... If it was a good idea, a major brand would have already done it. Yes. Like, do you, do you really think that if you could actually do this and do it well, that the major brands wouldn't have, pro like, 
different graphic options that you could pick. Well, hang on. You remember when K2 had those electric snowboards with the little red light? Remember? I have one. Oh, that's right. We got to use that in can Kevin Carver. Yeah, we do. Um, but... If anyone was going to do it, it would have been K2, and they would have figured out how to harness that kinetic yeah. energy and put different colored light bulbs, and then they would flicker different. If anyone did it, it would have been K2, because they did do it. Yeah. And they abandoned it after one year. Maybe um, two? I think the skis had it for like three or four. Skis may have, because I could see skiers just loving some stupid thing like that. Snowboarders, I think it only lasted, the electric was only like one or two years. Uh, so. Yeah. Either way, K2 did try it. A major manufacturer did try it, and it didn't work. Well, I wouldn't call it an LED board, but it did have a little light on it. It did. I Does yours yeah, light up still? Oh, yeah. It does? It does. Oh, my God. I know. Oh. It is by far the coolest thing that I own because of how ridiculous it is. It, it's so dope. You've got to, like, get it in the dark. Like, you can't see it normally. Like, but if you get it in the dark and you smack on the snowboard, yeah, it still lights up. <laughs> it's so fucking stupid. I know. Funny. It's amazing. That is amazing. Yeah, no. So... I don't, yeah, God, was it SIA they were there one year when we were there in Denver? That there was some company that was doing it? I can't remember. It was down in the asshole. Of there the had side. to have been, there had to have been one year that they were there. I just see it, like, the, the <coughs> place that I see them the most is on Facebook. I'll see them come across, like, Facebook ads, like, one of the random Facebook, like, sponsored videos. Oh, really? That's I think I blocked I them. I think I listed them as, I flagged them as spam. Yeah. And reported them as I haven't seen it in a while, but that's where I've seen it. Or, like, some random like podunk media site will pick it up and go you know this is the new cool thing in snowboarding LED snowboards it'll teach tricks and you can do this and you can do that blah, blah, blah. they have no connection to snowboarding whatsoever so they have no clue what they're talking about and yeah I mean LED snowboards are very stupid it's just it's a pointless thing that could break and it just changes the construction of the snowboard and it it's a distraction. It, it doesn't, doesn't add anything to something. No. And it's a distraction. Anything that's a distraction, I just view it as is probably not the best because the people that will buy that mm -hmm. are usually not good riders. No, they're not gonna be. They're they're like the people that are crushing beers at the bar and then going out night riding and be like, I can go faster than you as fast as possible and then they hit a lift tower and die. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know what? They end up on Jerry of the Day and I'm okay with that. There's nothing wrong with that, but I mean, could Kevin carve one? <laughs> More like, would Kevin carve one? Sure, I'd ride one. Well, there you go. If there's an LED company that makes snowboards that wants us to put it in an episode of Can't Kevin Carve It, we'll do it. I'm gonna mock it so bad. I'm oh, gonna... it's it's gonna get slammed. That means we gotta go to Keystone at night. Oh yeah, we have I gotta to get a ticket. Also, on that note, if somebody wants to send me one of those dumb carbon fiber over-engineered pieces of shit, I'll carve one of those, too. Basically, if anyone wants to send anything for Can Kevin Carve It... You Other can... than rotational bindings. That's a health hazard. I will not ride those. He will not. But I was just going to say, if anyone wants to send a board for Can Kevin Carve It, send it to this address right here. Care of me. If you want it back, you have to pay the shipping because I'm not paying for that shit. No, I'm cheap. We're not paying for the shipping here either. Yeah, no, that wasn't clear. That's that's all it's on you. you. But I'll write stuff, weird things. We'll even say you sponsor the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you want to buy one of these really terrible ideas, other than rotational bindings and not dual boards either, anything that might blow my knee out. Sorry, I value my health more than you. Yeah, I don't give up health insurance, so. Yeah. So that's that's more important for me. Wait, that's but, why that's why we need the knee replacement here. Oh, hey, there you go. I'll put that as a perk. <laughs> Kevin will ride a rotational. Kevin will ride a rotational binding if you do the uh, knee rotation. Uh, I mean, hey, if they're paying twenty grand. I think I can afford the hundred bucks for a set of Brocos. Yeah. So, anyways, back to LED boards. They're a really terrible idea, and they should die forever. I just I can't Burn, get over why you, why out. why you would feel that putting a battery. On top of your snowboard is a good idea. You've ridden something that had that much of a heavy something. I have. It had an iPad in the nose. Signal made it for an every third Thursday. Solid episode. aluminum base. That thing was really fast. Yeah. But, and, and it lit up when you plugged it in. When you plugged it in. But it didn't have a battery pack for on the hill. No. We cracked the iPad, too. That would surprise me. I think, well, actually... I can't remember. I think Mark dropped it before we put it in, so it cracked in the parking lot, and then they slipped it in, and then we proceeded to crack it a little bit more. 
from riding with it. But Either way. Whatever. Something like that, a weird gimmick like that, belongs in a show like every third Thursday, and that's it. That is it. Like, seriously, fuck these people. Yeah. Next! Next. Take a spin on the old wheel. Rurock. Rurock! Fucking worst helmets on earth. Oh, but I look like a stormtrooper. It's so cool. I've got a face mask. Blah, 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 blah. Their goggles are fucking pathetic. There's no peripheral in them. Yeah, they're too small. They're, they're, they're like, like they're like this. You like, oh like, my god. They're like chemistry goggles. Like, so to understand where Rock came from, Formula One racing, where you're literally you're not looking over your shoulder to see who's passing you. You're just yeah. You have somebody in your ear telling you who's behind you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So your your peripheral is already shut. Then they got this face mask that attaches on there. To seal everything in, and it's sticking off. And I, from what I've heard, they're not impact rated. So that face, it's not a true face guard. Right. It's a windshield. Yeah. So if you smack, I, from what I've heard. You get plastic shards smashing your, your face. face. Good. And then um, I've pissed Rear Rock off to the point that I've had them engage with me in social media and just been like, well, we know who you are. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know who you are, too. You fucking suck. Yeah. And uh, they just. <sighs> They're just stupid. And, like, the funny thing is, anytime I see someone with them, they cannot fucking snowboard to save their Nobody life. Nobody that knows what they're doing is buying a rock. It's just, like, it's always fucking idiots. Mm -hmm. Some guy was trying to argue with me about, he's like, well, you know, I don't need a good peripheral. I, can, I have this thing called a neck, and it swivels and turns. And I was like, cool. You know what I've got? Peripheral vision. I don't, I have I to swivel, I have to swivel my neck. I can pay attention to other things. Yeah. It's great. And a wide field of view is just, you know, good in general. Yeah. And I got helmets that were specifically designed for, you know, snowboarding. Yeah, that too. That not is, Formula One. Not Formula One racing. Yeah. But these things are just atrocious. And a little known fact, they actually tried to make snowboards. And I'm pretty sure they used a cap construction. They were, they were charging a buttload for the... They were like the most basic Duracer 4000 fucking 2 by 4 Impact instead oh. of two by two. Couldn't spend an extra ten cents aboard, could you? Yeah, right. I mean, what is the cost of an extra insert? Isn't it like a penny each or something? Yeah, if, I mean, if you're mass producing, maybe. You, yeah, it, it's not. It's not even a do extra dollar. No, it's not even like I think it's literally at about ten cents aboard to have a four by eight or four two by four, two by four, or four no. by four, four by eight. no, two by four. Two by four, because these guys had four yeah, by yeah, four. Yeah, two by four, right. Yeah, because they had the four by four. Right. And I was just like, are you fucking kidding me? And they were just such garbage. But yeah, Rurok, it's like, dude, they're so... And then they make that all chrome one, so it's super reflective when the sun hits it. It just glares you, and you're like, oh, God, I'm fucking blind. One of my favorite things ever is I saw a dude in the Sean White silver outfit, jacket, pants, silver Rurok helmet. Of course you did. Like, I... Not entirely convinced he didn't just get back from Mars. Maybe he's just a Daft Punk fan. I mean, he could be, but I feel like if you're a Daft Punk fan, that doesn't mean you have to be an idiot. Right, because wouldn't you just get the full flip-down visor helmet from Rosmal? Or Electric. Or Electric. Or the one they made, too. That was funny. Yeah. I would love to get one of those. Oh, I know. I would, too. If we got one of those, I would make you wear that for every episode of Can Kevin Perfect. <laughs> And I would. I'd be like, that's your uniform. You just wear this. And I'd get you a one piece. <laughs> yes. A white one piece. Yes, yes. With an American flag on it. Okay. With a cape. Of course, a cape. That's a given. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> there's these things, like, I just, I don't get why people think they're so good or they're cool. Like, are you a Star Wars fan? Is that it? You want, because if you're a Star Wars fan, I can't think of anything less cool than be like, I want to be a stormtrooper. Like, really? You want to be a fucking stormtrooper? The whole Star Wars uni universe! And you literally want to be a clone of Jango Fett like, that can't shoot. Your aim is fucking atrocious. Which is another thing. How the fuck can you be a clone of a bounty hunter and not hit anything? Like, what the fuck did you do wrong? I don't know. That's why I'm pretty sure the Han Solo is actually a Jedi. Because he never gets shot. It's true. He, he might be a little forced sensitive. I think he, I mean, it's okay. Whatever, Anyways, Disney Disney has ruined Star Wars for me forever. I'm less upset about it than you are. They've done some okay stuff. 
It's okay. If they're going to do anything, if they really want to redeem themselves, they'll remake the Ewok movies. The new TV show has some pretty fucking good screenshots. Does it's it? Pretty good. Yeah, the new, uh, this is way off topic. Doesn't sort matter. Of, they're sort probably, of. They're sort probably, of. They're probably uh, wearing yeah, fucking rock uh, helmets in there. It's about the Mandalorians. Oh, yeah, no, I heard that. Yeah, and it's, it's okay. Favreau doing it. Eh, that might be good. So it might actually be good. But whatever. You know what else is funny, though, when you think about, like, weird helmets? That uh, Battlestar Galactica, the helmets that they wore for their MPs mm -hmm. were all Jiro bad lieutenants that had been repainted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, that helmet. Whew. That is what the, like literally made a helmet that will break the back of your skull and probably paralyze you if it shifted weird. Yeah, but Danny Castro wrote one, so whatever. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking weird. But yeah. Rurock. Like, why the? F Who buys these things I that keeps know. them in business? And if like you really have that much of an issue with like cold air hitting your face, there's other solutions out there that allow you to use a real helmet and real goggles. Yeah. So. Have you ever looked at the tech in their goggles and how low it is? No. I don't even think they're like... I've never bothered to put much effort into paying attention to their existence. Well, you shouldn't. Other than laughing at people that wear it. Yeah. I, I If if you have a Rurok and a Skate Banana, I won't get on the chair like <laughs> Yeah. That happened... Uh, a good combo. Where were we? Was it... I think it was Breckenridge, and it was a busy day, and the dude went to get on me, and I just pushed him over and got on, the, on a four-pack by myself and looked at him, and I was like, I don't ride with kooks. Like, I literally, like... I won't lie, I'm not an inclusive person, I don't believe in full inclusion, but there are certain things that if I look at you and I'm like, you're going to hurt me if you sit near me, I will literally do whatever I can, but yeah, oh god, was it Copper? I think it was Copper, we were riding around spraying this dude in a rear rock the one day, he was so pissed but he could not keep up with us, oh, no, and like we would, like for every two laps we were doing, he was doing like one, Right. so we were getting him twice on the same lap. It was so funny. And I don't know about you, and maybe I've just been unlucky, but for some reason, I feel like more snowboarders are wearing a rock than skiers. Oh, yeah. And why is that? I don't know, but they're also the same people that have the worst sticker jobs on their snowboards. Oh, yeah, of course. And which I totally judge people based on their sticker jobs, which you can buy stickers on angrysnowboarderstore.com. In fact, they're the only stickers that I put on my boards. Sometimes I put them I on boards, too. Yeah, that happens. It does. But I just, yeah, oh man, they're just like, it's just, they're awful. They're fucking awful. They're not good. We're going to get a lot of hate for this segment. That's fine. I can deal with it. Yeah. You leave those comments, because that means you're watching the videos, which is driving up site views, which means we're making money. Ha ha! Ha! Double standard. Gotcha, fuckers. So there. All right. We're moving on to the next topic. Yeah. All right, Kevin, it's time to face the wheel. Give it a spin. No, we got that. Snowboard pole! Oh! Yay, okay. Oh my god, which one do you want to talk about? There's been multiple iterations of uh, this one. Um, let's talk about the death jousting stick snowboard pole version. The one that you have to collapse and then strap to the top of your bindings? Yeah. Yeah, that... I just... Why does that... Like, I, I love that their marketing is like, snowboarders get stuck in flat spots... And then they have to be pulled by their ski friends. And I was like, no, or, they have to strap their back foot and they skate. You know, or, like we do with lift lines every day. Or, you know, you just learn where the flat spots are and keep your speed. It's, so yeah. one of the classic arguments I've ever heard from one of these companies was, well, you know, when you go into Blue Sky Basin at Vail and you got to go, there's that long ass cat track, which I mean, that cat track is fucking long. Yeah, it's fucking treacherous. I hate it. I've never had to skate it. I haven't either. But I've also never had to strap in to go down it. I just ride it with one foot out just in case. But I just keep all my weight forward. I can make it all the way around the bend, and then you hit that little pow field, and I'll pump that mm -hmm. down to the snow fence right where the entrance gate is. Then I strap in, and then I ride to the chair. Yeah, and that's what I've always done too. Like, is coming across that cat track, you have you know a slope here, and it's usually got a drop to it, and there's a little bit of almost like a pseudo wall there. And usually there's some cutouts and whatever, so you just get close to the wall, and every time you feel like you're losing a little bit of speed, you just ollie up and transition down off of it. Yeah. Gain some speed again. It's not yep. that fucking hard. No, it's, it, it's about pumping, but yeah. these guys, and like the weird thing was, it, it had this whole thing that strapped into the tops of your binding, so it would lock you into your back foot. So you just had this like sway bar almost yeah. in there. So I was like, well, how's that work when you go through like, the trees or anything? Any sort of, any sort of it's like trying to foot steer your board or any sort of like too much flex, like yeah, like it, it yeah. 
it's gonna it's gonna hinder the flex of the board because you're putting a bar above the flex of the board and it's trying to sh like you're, this is trying to flex bottom is trying to flex across this bar across the top no no yeah so you're, you're, impeding, you're impeding the natural movement yeah. of the board and then or the thing's just gonna blow off and you're gonna lose it yeah that and it was just like then there was that other one that was like a paddle. Yeah. Did you ever see that? It looked like a long. It looked like yeah, a stand-up paddle. Basically, yeah, it was an SUP paddle. But it was shaped snow. more like a hockey stick because like the blade wasn't as long, so right. it was like really. And they were like, "You can steer with it," and I was like, "Or you can turn." You just turn, turn. They did not. That's they were like, "No, no, that doesn't work that way." And I was like, "You, you mean you can't turn a snowboard?" And I was like, "I'm pretty sure you can turn a snowboard." Yeah, they and, all they all turn. Actually. And and the funny thing is, like the cost on these, I've seen them be anywhere from ninety nine dollars to two hundred and fifty. And I'm like, Jeez, what? Like, I'm sorry, but you know what? Okay, so here here's a good example. A basin has that new terrain, mm -hmm. so the chairlift doesn't go all the way to the bottom of the train. So if you ride it down, you've got to hike back up. Right. It's uphill. You think I'm going to push myself with a paddle, or I'm going to hike? I'm going to hike or right. I skate. Yeah. It's fine. You know. What do you do? I unstrap one foot. I give three good pushes. I go about 60 feet. I give three good pushes. I go 60 feet. Personally, I don't get why you, you would need a pole for snowboarding. It just does not work. Like, And honestly, they're kind of hard to use. Like, I've, I've borrowed, you know, I've had some skier friends just throw me a pole on occasion. You're like, it's not that easy. You're like stabbing it into the ground. Yeah, it's kind of fucking hard, actually. I'd rather penguin walk. I would rather, I would literally rather just unstrap and walk. Yeah. That's what I do. I've done that. It's not that hard to strap back in. No. It's really not. No. The, there's one redeeming value to these things. Pipe jousting. Like the old skater die Nintendo game. I'm all for this. <laughs> I have wanted to do half pipe joust. I know you have. This might actually be something we do, but if we're going to do it, I'm getting the big jousting sticks like American Gladiator. Yeah, we're going to so do it as a... After we don't kill anyone. Well, no, we're going to be doing it against each other. If we're doing it other people, they can die. I don't give a shit. I'll fucking ride with a lance. <laughs> but I want to do it in the mini pipe of copper this winter. Yeah. This might be one of the challenge videos we do this winter. Ooh, ooh, ooh. If you want to see us do that, join angrysnowboard.vip. <laughs> so that we can you, buy Justin. So we can sticks. buy Justin sticks. But I, I can't fathom who as a snowboarder would just think that making a stick would be good. Like, on top of the fact, then you're riding around with this fucking stick. I like using my hands like mm -hmm. when I get in trees or, you know, I use a lot of hand motions. I like to grab my snowboard, you know, things like that. I like to do tripods. How the hell are you going to tripod with this fucking giant poochie stick? You're just like, blah, you fucking, you know. Wait, maybe they're trying to bring back snow ballet. Yeah, but on a snowboard? But on a snowboard. Yes. <laughs> That still sounds really stupid. Oh, it's very dumb. I don't know. But, yeah. This snowboard pole? Leave us a comment if you've ever used a snowboard pole, because one, will mock you, and two, we really want to know who the fuck buys these things. And I am kind of curious. Maybe there is a redeeming value yeah. in some way. I very, very much doubt it. I'd be very impressed if you could convince me that there is. You know who I could see, and once again, is like amputees, right? Adaptive yeah. riders mm -hmm. potentially, because I've seen them use poles up at the basin. Like some of the guys that have the above the knee amputation, yeah, yeah. So they don't have like you know that's kind of like locked in a position, and they're just kind of they're kind of scooting themselves. And I'm like, that's cool. Yeah. Sometimes I see those guys, and I'm like, you want me to push you? And they're like, no, I got this. And I'm like, all right, man. And they're like, but thanks. And I was like, dude, it's not hard. I'm unstrapped. You're strapped in. I can just literally put a hand on your hip and just push you. Yeah. It's not that hard. And so. the, but the thing is with these, with all these stupid snowboard pole creations, is this already exists? Backcountry poles, they're yeah. already collapsible. Yeah. So why why do you need to invent something? That are, and then sell it as one. Right. I could have two. You'd have two. And, and this that. is actually easier than. <laughs> like no. So they kind of look like a poles. gondola operator, like you know, like yeah. over in Venice, like oh asshole, mio, oh, I'm an asshole. And I guarantee you that backcountry poles are gonna be lighter. Oh yeah, well they're like carbon, yeah. or aluminum, and they collapse. Yeah, but, so they're hollow. Yeah, yeah. I saw one that was like solid plastic, and I was like, Jesus Christ, how many dinosaurs did you kill to make that thing? I mean, I guess white room of death and smacking people out of your way. There's that. Why wouldn't you just get a hockey stick and then put some hockey pads on? 
But it's not for snowboarding. Yeah, but it'd be a hockey stick. It'd be like preseason at Copper before they open when the volunteers get to go up with a hockey stick and slap shot the rocks off the trail. Have you ever seen that? No. Oh, it's freaking hilarious. So, like, the volunteers, they try to get them to go up early, and it's like rock mitigation, and they yeah. slap shot any loose rocks from the snow making on the cats right. off. But uh, years and years ago, when I lived in Steamboat, I came down for opening day at Copper, and... Uh, I got to watch people literally riding around with hockey sticks. Like, they'd stop and then just, like, poof, and flick it off into the side of the trail. And what the hell is that? That would be enjoyable. That, that was, was kind of enjoy that. That was kind of funny, but, yeah, I don't... Fuck these things. Yeah, this is just one of those unnecessary things that, like, somebody thought was a good idea. Somebody was borrowed a pole from their skier friend and was like, Oh, dude, everybody in snowboarding needs one of these because flat spots suck. Go no. faster. You suck. Yes. You suck, sir. It's right. my turn to face the wheel. You got that? So we got that yeah, one already. Third time. So we probably just did that. Did that one before, too. Oh, my God. Oh, no. Bon hey. All, right. All right. We actually have a visual aid for this. There's the magnetic plate. Yeah. There's the there's, there's the, the back there's, that's front the front foot that's the front foot front foot. Everyone see that magnets? I wrote how this. do they work? Ha! So I oh actually to go along with this visual aid, I got a, a digital scale. I want to weigh what this see what this binding weighs with this magnetic pad. Four point four zero nine pounds for your back foot, the front foot, 2.405 pounds, two pounds difference. This is without the discs in them. They had metal discs, so that would add more weight to them. But these fucking things, I actually rode these. I did a review on them. I rode them too. Yeah, you did too. Yeah. Uh, this guy, I think he ended up spending a couple hundred thousand dollars on molds, but this is going to be the revolutionary thing to make so you can strap in and step out. And Burton did that with the fusion binding, and that lasted one season. Yep. One season. And that was all plastics. I thought like, it had a metal subframe. I think it might have had like a few little metal pieces to it, but I don't okay. think I it... Never saw, I've never seen those in person. I wrote them. I would love to have a set just for the... Novelty. Ridiculous, yeah, the novelty, novelty version of it. But I keep these around for any time someone says they want to make a binding and they do it. I'd like to put this out and show it to them and be like, this thing's a fucking crock of shit. Mm -hmm. So the the guy that wanted to invent these, like he tried. I'll give him that. He put a lot of money into it, but it was never going to be as – you were never going to get the money back. And like, So most of the parts on this binding are actually sourced – from China, like they're all OEM and you can just order these parts for binding. So like, um, I believe the ratchets are older Raiden ratchets, like kind of first like gen. Era. And then the toe strap, I think, I want to say it was like a flux or an agency strap, which looks like agency. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of what I was thinking. And the high back, it's a different version, but it, I can't remember what brand it was. It was like some generic ass brand, but these things, so these things are supposed to be fail safe. So there's four cams on this, on the plate here, and it activates two cams so that they'll lock, so the other two don't, but there's always gonna be two locked, and these things are never supposed to fail. I had these things not engage on me twice, and I pulled the back foot off. Um, but this, like, there's no flex on that plate right there. So you created essentially a it's a massive dead spot. I mean, what do you say, about eight inches by five, four and a half inch dead spot? Yeah, probably right around there. You know? So you have no binding flex underneath it. For the sake of it's easier to get out, but you still have to reach down and release the cams mm -hmm. to do it versus releasing down and releasing two straps. So what's the difference? And this guy tried to sell these to a bunch of companies who's like, Burton's interested, Burton's interested. I was like, no, no, no. Burton's not interested, dude. No one gives a fuck. And you know it's bad when there's a warning label that's taped on. 
It says, warning, do not remove this cover. Powerful magnets installed. Damage to the binding or yourself can result from tampering. We are serious. I'm pretty sure if I put this anywhere near any of my electronic devices, it would wipe the hard drive. Yeah. So, yeah, they're strong magnets. I'm, oh, fuck, dude. Like, look at this. <laughs> It'll pick it right up, so... I mean, can't deny the magnet on it. But, this thing, I... Dude, the first year he was at SIA, he had one of the biggest booths. Which it is like, was huge. It's like forty thousand dollars to yeah. get that size booth, and I was like, Jesus Christ! Like it was bigger some of the, than some of like the already established snowboard brands. Oh yeah, no, like, it, it was, was it was a corner booth too. He yeah, paid some serious money yep. for that. So he probably he actually had to pay even more to get the placement where he was because he wasn't down in the asshole. No, he was like right in the middle. Right in the middle, like you know, people cutting through and everything, and I just. You know, I was like, well, I'll give him a shot because it's something unique. But I knew right away looking at it, I was like, this thing's going to be bad. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and it was. It was awful. I wrote it. And, you know, he never asked for them back. And that's how come I have a pair of these. And they were pricey, too. I think they were like two, two forty nine or two, two ninety nine or more. I can't remember. There was a, this is the base model. There's one that was higher end with a higher end strap. I don't remember. I try not to. Yeah. And... <laughs> These things, but you, what did you think when you wrote them? They were just clunky. I never had an issue with the actual mechanism, and for me, they weren't as advertised, but they're just heavy and clunky, and, and like I said earlier, talking about the lost face huggers, like, if you want to get into your binding fast, there are options out there. Use them. Yeah. They, they You don't need to do anything else. Like, Flow started in 1996. They've had over 20 years of work on that binding. It works pretty fucking good now. Like, you seriously think in your garage you're going to come up with something better using magnets? No. You're not. No. And, Burton and, put probably a few million dollars into step on. You don't have that. No. So The, the other thing was, he actually didn't design the binding. He designed the concept and then was working with China uh, to do it. And that's why everything's so clunky. Yeah. And the funny thing was, actually, now I remember where the Hybeck's from. It's an old ride Tomcat. Same thing with the heel cup and the base tray. The design came off of an old ride binding from, let's see, I was 2021 when that came out. So that was 15 years ago. Yeah. It's like, like early 15. 2000s. Oh, yeah. It was like turn of the century. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember them. Um, because everyone was trying to get me on them because they were supposed to be like the strongest and lightest. And I was like, this is the fucking heaviest shit. And that's back when Ride was like really, really heavy. Yeah, they were. And yeah, no, these things, just just a poor design. And then the best was like, he designed them and then he was selling them. Then he went and tried to do a Kickstarter or crowdfunding for it mm -hmm. and couldn't get it. Right. And it just... Evidently, he's like, and no shop wanted them. So, yeah, it was just, these things were just retardedly freaking just counterintuitive to snowboarding. And I use that term retardedly as in, like, what it means to impede or hinder. They are so counter to what you would want in snowboarding. And it's just, I mean, and again, you're complicating what should be so simple. simple. You, you have more moving parts. On top of the fact, uh, they don't sit level. You do sit higher mm -hmm. with your back foot. So now your back foot is sitting higher than your front foot, which is going to put even more weird strain on your body because you already naturally tend to favor your front foot for yeah. weight when you're riding down the hill, just mm -hmm. distributing it. So it wasn't good, but uh, Casey Willax and Crowbar actually rode for him because the guy paid That's for That's right. He paid for them to go to Mount Hood for a month and film and stuff. So they got a free trip out of it. Yeah. And I, I remember really. back in the day, Casey actually would take two front bindings because they're not anatomical. Yeah. So then he would flip the straps and and he would ride just the front bindings as if it was them. Right. For photos and stuff, which was super funny. Um that was another thing. Yeah, these things aren't anatomical, so you yeah, have the frames to, are symmetrical. So you just, you just flip. You just take the high back off of the yeah. rear with the magnets. You put it on the front one. Yep. You flip the straps. Yep. And you got a left and right binding. Yep. That was pretty much it. Yeah. So you just take everything apart. And the other thing is, like, if you look at the plastic on this and stuff, it's, oh, it's so cheap. It is the cheapest fucking plastic yeah. on there. It's the cheapest like stamped. 
stamped aluminum. You know, it's not forged, it's stamped, you know. So these things were just, uh, but I, I keep them around as a constant reminder of how bad these are. But I did like the fact that they put a little traction back here. Like, so you get a little grip on this. These things didn't grip for shit. No, no, uh, no. You were just like, it's hard yeah. plastic. Yeah, it was just, but whatever. Um, he's not in snowboarding anymore. So <coughs> we got that going on for us. At least yeah. we can keep that kooky shit around. God, like looking at that from the side, those high backs are so freaking big. Oh my God, like, uh, they're, they're, they're about an inch thick. Jesus. It's like so ridiculous. Why? And you know what? I wrote them. I reviewed them. I didn't like them. You live, you learn, you move on, just like we're about to do now, because we're going into another topic. All right, so we have two topics left on the wheel. We have guilts and snowboards, which a lot of people requested, and suspension bindings, which a lot of people have forgotten. You think I? So we're going to rock, paper, scissors. If I win, I'll do suspension bindings. You win, you get guilts on? Yeah. All right. All right. One, two, three, shoot. 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 Damn it. Yes. Oh, one. That was solid. Wow. Oh, yeah. I haven't had... Damn, that was impressive. That's right. I'm We're really good at getting the same thing. Yes, we are. Okay. So, suspension bindings. There's been two companies that I've seen do this. The big one was Manic Snow, which mm -hmm. the bindings were made out of Forged Magnesium, which, if anyone remembers the old K2 V8 and V9 and V10 series, yeah. they were Forged Magnesium. Magnesium, great metal, not great in bindings, tends to crack. Mm -hmm. uh, these things also, with the suspension, were probably about an inch, inch and a half high, with hard coils and then a foam in there, and basically, your whole binding becomes a giant dead spot. They were wide, too. I measured them. Yeah. They were like 14 inches yeah, wide. Yeah, they were fucking fucking huge. huge. And they were heavy. Each one was... Yeah, there was like metal coils at one. Yeah, I think they were like nine pounds each. But it was designed by a bunch of engineers that had gone snowboarding and didn't look... They are like, there's no suspension. Like, I think they came from a car background or something. There's like, there's no suspension in snowboarding. I was like, your knees, your ankles? Like, that's that's... Yep. Your, your body is the natural suspension. Bend your knees. Bend your knees. But uh, I remember when they came out, I think they were selling them for like $350 or something or $500. They were pricey. Yeah. They were super pricey. And this is another company that I saw at SIA. They were there two years. The first year, they bought the center booth at the big four-way. In, in in, in, they were in Vegas. And it was the big four-way. Their booth, like that location, they probably paid eighty grand for it. And they came in swing, and like no one was in their booth except for like the SIA people and right. other people from companies coming by to look at it. And go, what the fuck is that? Yeah. And I wrote an article about them mocking them, sure. and they decided to get into a pissing match with me. And I was like, you guys won't be here in two years. And you know what? They weren't there in two years. No one would buy them. The price was too high. They they serve no functionality. Like yeah. I mean, if you really want that dead of a ride, I guess. But at that point, just buy an American-made board with a lot of epoxy in yeah. it. Buy it never summer. There is one application. If you're trying to get like the land speed record, you just need something that's going to be super, super smooth on your foot. Yeah, that's about it. I the, <laughs> and the extra weight might keep things a little more stable. But did you ever see the other one that was at SIA that like? I mean, it was like a full suspension, but it was a plate binding, so it was almost like a hard boot setup. I, I ran up, it was it was in that weird section right before you would get into snowboards. So it was in the skis, but it was kind of like off. I was just walking by and caught out of the corner of my eye. I was like, what the fuck is that thing? Didn't see those, no. And, but I mean, you, they were like a riser suspension. Mm -hmm. And it was, and they like winged out. They almost looked like an old jack, like a car frame jack. You mm -hmm. know, the ones that come out like mm -hmm. in the diamond shape. And that's what it looked like, but it was a full suspension for it. Oh, uh, uh yeah no it, these these things were these things were awful but like a suspension binding makes no sense to me especially with that much of a dead spot yeah like i like board feel you need board feel to i you know i've been i was blind for five, the last five years i snowboarded pretty much till i got my eye surgery i rode by braille i needed to feel what the board was doing yeah like board feels good board flex good yep so many that and heavy and 
again, complicating things. So I can talk about that. You're raising up, you're raising yourself up above the board, which that fucks everything up. Like there's been so much effort in the last 15, 20 years to get us closer and closer and closer to the board and get more feel and get more feel more flex. Better board flex. So raising yourself up above the board, like it just, it, it, no, 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 just, just no, that's and all years need to cool it. If you haven't been snowboarding for 20 years, actually snowboarding for 20 years and you're an engineer, just don't. No. No. Don't just, do it. Just don't do it. Don't do it. Don't Your do idea it. is not good. Yeah. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not good. It's not favored. It's not anything anyone asked for. It's not anything anyone wanted. And, and the best was, I think one of the arguments the guys was like, we won this award in design and this. And I was like, yeah, but it's from a non-snowboarding publication. I don't right. give a fuck. It's like, do, do you care if I won an award in snowboarding? No. Exactly. Same concept. Yeah. And it... And the other thing was, you should have seen these guys. This was the classic example of the kookiest kooks. It was old, rich, white guys with money. Like, the, 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 the ORWG. The ORWG. Old, rich, white guy. The worst thing in snowboarding. Old, rich, white guy that just throws money at an idea that isn't good. I need to find one of those guys and sell them on the idea of angry. Yeah. I'd be like, media entity, let's do this. Make money. Give me yeah. money. Finance us. But it was, I mean. And they had all original molds for all their parts. Fuck. They spent so much fucking money. Yeah, you know, like, to cut molds for an aluminum-based binding, uh, I know how much that is. It's not cheap. You're looking at upwards of three to three to five hundred thousand dollars for the tooling to make aluminum bindings. Yeah. That's why Ride updates their chassis every eight to ten years. Yeah. Because it's that expensive. They need to get their money back. Right. Yeah. So, so they easily put probably a million dollars into that. I think they spent like $2.5 million on the yeah. whole company idea. I and it. it didn't even make it two full years. No. I never did. Just, no, it just... The classic example of what, do, what does snowboarding need? Well, suspension bindings, of course. So we're going to do it. And it wasn't. It's like it's not anything anyone asked for. I've never needed no. it. Like. No. There's your your knees and your ankles and your hips are your natural suspension. If you really feel like that you need that much of like shock absorption that you need suspension, buy something with channel and buy Genesis ESTs or Genesis X ESTs. Yes. Because that floating carbon plate underneath your foot does work like that, but it actually doesn't ride like shit. The review for those are coming out soon too. But so, so there's a bonus fact for you guys. Yeah. So there is actually one good suspension binding from Burton. Shocking. So, all the other ones, if there's a coil in it, basically. Yeah. If it's a suspension because there's a coil in it, run away as fast as possible. Well, that was the thing. There was four coils, one yeah. on each corner of that binding, yeah. and they, they, they weren't underfoot. They were off to the side, mm -hmm. and then there was this plate, and yep. then there was a hollow spot, so snow would build up, and then they put this foam in there, too. So, you had, like, you had a lot right? of foam. The foam had to have been for dampening because the coils would have just... Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Yeah, I, I, I would have been interested to ride a set of these. Oh, I would have loved to. To see how fast the screws vibrated out of the board yep. and loosened. Yep. That would have been it. So if anyone out there has a set of Manic Snow bindings, one, you're an idiot. Two, send them to us at this address because we will do an episode of Can Kevin Carve It? Sponsored by you. Sponsored by you. Yeah, we're, we're going to allow the snowboarders of the internet to sponsor Can Kevin Carpet by submitting their boards to us, or gear, or whatever. Yeah. So, which, actually, we've only got, I think, two or three more episodes before we got to film some more, so... I know, we're going to get on it pretty soon here. We should just go to Loveland, since we got a longer talk about all to buy the tickets. And then we'll, get some, we'll get some boards together and go. Yeah. So, all right. Final bad snowboard invention. Eh, eh, the Gilson. The Gilson. Oh, man. So, Gilson is a 3D base board. There is a center channel down the board. And then there's a shelf that then goes up. And then it's flat again towards the edge. Some so of the boards don't have a channel either, too. Some of, them, no, some of them, it's just the edges. 
that did it, but okay. um, that was the first generation. The channels, right. the channels, like their second generation, I think. Gotcha. I so, and their whole concept is it makes it more catch free. It has they've got their POW one that's the POW channel, and my first thought coming from sort sort of having a like manufacturing background is you hurt that base, you're fucked. You can't tune it. You cannot put that thing through a grinder because you're just going to grind right through that race section and then your board's toast. So hope you don't hit anything or ever scratch your base or ever need an edge tune. Hope you never need to tune your board because you can't. Well, how many times did you ask them on social media? Oh, I've asked them four or five times. And they've ignored you like every time. And they won't answer me. So their response to me was, well, you just, you have to hand grind the edge. And I was like, or the base. And I was like, huh? Wait, you, what? Well, they're huh? like, you got to hand finish it is what they said. Like, huh? Cause like, cause you know how the edge is yeah. big at the, the edge is up high and then it sticks down. Right. But I was like, so if you hit a rock or anything and you got to P-Tex it, you can't stone grind it. You can't no. base grind it. And their response was, well, you're going to have to hand finish it. There's a lot of shops that do that. And I was like, there are not a lot of shops that do that anymore. Like living in Breckenridge, I can think of three shops in this County that can do that. But they would probably look at me like, why are we doing this? The The other thing was the claim that they made. And this is what pisses me off when people outside snowboarding come in. We were the first to do this. And I was like, no, you weren't. well, no, you weren't. 1978, Dina Starr did it on a set of skis. Mm -hmm. uh, and 3D bases are not 3D new. 3D bases are not new. I mean, I could think of Echelon, Battalion. And their argument was, well, well, we raised the whole base up and there's our angles. And I was like, yeah, well, the angle makes more sense. You yeah, know? the angle works yeah omatic did it i mean rosnell has the roller base uh you can um burton did a convex base, convex did a convex base. base. Yeah, there's so many companies that have done it these guys didn't do their research when you make a claim like that that pisses me off the other one is our boards are so buttery because of this and the dude's literally flexing the board back together but he's like they have so much pop and i was like well, butter and pop are two opposite things. Yeah, and much. on top of the fact, you just made a really soft board. If you make a really soft board, any board of butter, it yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah. Like you just soft you, boards butter. You thin the core out. You profile it thinner. You just don't put it. You put lower end like biax glass in it. Mm -hmm. You don't put a lot of layers into it. You use less epoxy. That's it. You literally make thinner. You use thinner material, and it will butter. I mean. The Battalion Wally, classic example. I'm pretty sure I could fold that board nose to tail. It's probably one of the softest boards. The original worldwide weapon. The Rockard. First year Rockard worldwide weapon. That board was Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. Oh, God. Nitro Sub-Zero. Yeah. yeah. Those boards are soft and you can butter them. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. But butter and soft flex do not mean pop. No. That doesn't. That's the other thing. It's like there's so much bullshit in their marketing videos that you're just like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, if you have any brain about snowboarding, you see it, you look at it, and you go, this is bullshit. This is complete and utter fucking bullshit. And and I remember them reaching out to me a few times, and I, I can't remember, like, I pretty much shot Nick Gilson, the owner of them. Which, the other thing is, company owners that use their names huh. in this day and age, you're not Tom Sims. You're not Jake Burton Carpenter. Why is your name on a board? Gilson. My, my name's Gilbert Gilson. And I, I hey, Gilson's just not a good name. No. It just doesn't sound good. It, does, it doesn't feel good. Like, Dude, it took me like four years to warm up to the name Marhar. Yeah. That, that was one's like, even a little... It's a weird... People are like, what's a Marhar? And you're like, I have no clue what a Marhar is. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know what Marhar is. And I I feel like it's some inside joke with the owners of that company. I and I just let them go with it. Is. I don't know. But... Yeah. This, this is the thing that bothers me so much is like they're like, we do all this revolutionary tech and we've done this. And the fact that the guy has a TED talk. I don't oh, know, God, he does. It's like 28 minutes. I listen to it. Oh, and it, part oh. of it's the story and like part of it's this. But, you know, and also they're funding like they have a state grant for creating jobs in rural Pennsylvania. Oh, come on. So, and, and the other one that really pissed me off, we've made thousands of snowboards. You don't have the production facility to make thousands of snowboards. You have one, maybe two presses. Even if you were running three shifts a day with two presses, how many boards do you think they could make? Three shifts a day. Three shifts a day, two presses. I mean, when I was at Signal, we were making max 50 boards a day with two presses and two finishers. Okay. 
So never summer, five presses, three shifts a day, can maybe make about, I th- want to say like about 200, 225. That number might be a little off, but I know when they were doing two shifts a day, mm-hmm. they told me that they could only make about 127 boards. That sounds about right, yeah. Uh, I know places like Mothership, SWS, any of the places in China, it, it, like China, classic example, like 10 ba- ten presses, and they can maybe make like three, 400 boards a day. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, it. they don't have the capacity to make thousands. And it's one of the classic things that I catch small companies, well, we're selling thousands of these. Where? There's no shops that no. carry them. I remember, and that's the other thing is, so they did, they have that Airstream and they tour around. And they said the first year they went to a thousand stores and none of, no shop bought them. That ought to tell you that there's no demand for your stuff in the shop. Yeah, you're which not, is fine. You're not I, Jake Burton in 1977 trying to sell ski shops on a sport that doesn't exist yet anymore. It's a known product. <laughs> the other thing is, is like one of the claims I saw them making on social media. None of our boards have ever been warranted. And then there's like six people that were all broken boards. Yep. And they're like, where, oh, where do you want to so go? Good. Like, yeah. I, I, so I remember the first time I saw them in person at SIA. They, they didn't run a big, big booth. They were kind of like off on the corner of the asshole of snowboard section. But they had room for the Airstream and everything. And I walked in and this dude, I think his name was Dan. I can't remember. Just just snorting heavy and eyes like saucers. And I was like, oh, that dude's coked out of his mind. Mm-hmm. Believe me, I know what people look like when they're coked out of their mind. I work in a liquor store in a ski town. I, I sell them booze when they're coming down. And he just kept snorting and like rubbing his nose. And he's like, these boards are just so sick, man. So sick. And I was like, I'd ask a question and he'd have no answer. And he walked away. I picked one of the boards up, put it down on the ground, you know, holding the nose and flexed it. Just that deep flex. The amount of cracking I heard from the fiberglass oh, and epoxy bet. was, and I was like, these guys didn't crack the boards before they put them up. Like, it's like rule number one. Rule number one. Like, what's the first thing you do when you get new snowboards in the shop? Flex them all. Flex them all and crack the fiberglass so that no one ever hears it. Right. Because all that's the first thing, you know, the average current customer has no clue when they come in. And if a board hasn't been flexed before and they go to flex and they hear that, they're like, oh, I just broke shit. it. Like, I just broke it. Or they're like, oh, this is cheap shit. Yeah. So, yeah, it's like the first thing I do. Plus, it's like super cathartic and it's like, oh, it feels so good. It's like ripping a board out of a brand new wrapper. I and love just going, Oh, I feel so good. So but if you're showing boards at some place where buyers are supposed to be impressed and want to spend money on your stuff, maybe don't do that. Maybe yeah. maybe pre crack your stuff. Well, and that's the thing. And, and like their claims are like, you know, you're you have better edge hold. And I was like, actually, you have less. Yeah, edge. you have way less. You have way less yeah. edge hold. Like I remember when I was working with Echelon and designing stuff with them, and we were talking about their because they borrowed the Omatic BS technology and then they tweaked it and they were working on it. And when you elevate that edge, you lose edge hold. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yours is better. Theirs was better because it went tip to tail. But I was like, you still have to put it way over on edge yeah. to get it. But it's like some of the boards, the Rossi boards with the roller, I've had people be like, oh, I can feel it. I was like, it's 1.5 millimeters. You can't feel it. You can't it, it. It's it's just enough to raise you on a flat surface that your edge isn't dragging. Mm-hmm. That's it. It's, mm-hmm. it's so minimal. And, you know, just this you're losing you're literally losing edge control oh wow yeah you could butter but try to control a butter with your edge you can yeah. now on top of that like the reason you put a slant on it if you're doing that 3d shaping like omatic or echelon did was so that as you're transitioning it's a smooth transition, transition. where if you have a platform a shelf and then another platform oh. it's abrupt and there's this weird teetering teeter totter where you're on the corner of that platform right so then there's you have to be they have to be like overly aggressive going from flat basing onto edge. Otherwise it's going to, you're going to slide out or it's going to hook. It's going to, it's not going to act normal. It's no. not going to act like a snowboard. It's not. And that was the other thing. And I mean, these boards just look so shitty. And yeah. Cheap. The quality, the finish quality is terrible. Terrible. I mean, really bad, which we're talking about yeah, the nice snowboards. They're probably finishing it with a hand sander. Yeah. Because again, you have a bunch of 3d contours, so you can't put it across a, Belt grinder. No. Well, you can for the big flat section, the big but then you've section. got to go yeah. around the edge. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, you can always look at it, and it always has that white furry look to it. Yep. And I just, I, people always ask me, like, when are you going to ride one? And I was like, I'm not. I just have no ambition to deal with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, my personal favorite was, because I'd written 
an article about him or I'd done something where I called him out on something. Maybe it was when we did the old podcast. I think it was when I did the old podcast. I, I maybe I not with this. you, but I think I did it with Zach Griffin, but I had kind of called Gilson out a little bit. And one of their writers reached out to me and he's like, dude, there's just like a whole bunch of bullshit going on over there. You need to do this. And I was like, I don't need to do shit. And the guy kept trying to tell me, he's like, I'm sponsored by them because I'm a butter artist. And I was like, what the fuck is a butter artist? What the fuck is that? I was like, I've never heard of you and you look like a fucking kook. Wow, you can butter? Cool. Go to Japan then. Go to Korea. Yeah, go to Japan and learn that you don't know how to butter. Go to Korea and just make butter videos. Like, I, you, people love that shit. Yeah. But yeah, so basically, he finally, he I kept telling him, like, no, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't care to even acknowledge him. So finally, I just copied and pasted his message to Nick, the owner. I was like, you deal with your riders. I'm sick of this bullshit. He was like, oh, okay, yeah, have a good day. The guy's like, you fucking narked me out. And I was like, no, I told you. I didn't give a fuck. And if you kept pushing me, I would do this. I'm a dick. I don't care. I don't care what your problems are. Your little drama doesn't concern me. Yeah. And now you're time vampiring me. And taking time away from me to do things because I'm getting 20 messages and shit's blowing up and I'm getting these notifications. That's literally time I could be answering you snowboarders of the internet's questions, which I try to answer everyone's. And this just pisses me off to no end that he did this. And I was just like, fuck that brand. Fuck the people. I don't give a fuck about any of them. Like, I crappy just, product, crappy finish, crappy design, crappy concept. I mean, the only thing that they've got right is selling direct because that's the future of snowboarding. That's fine. Good. Go embrace it. Go do your thing. But let's be honest. You're probably making two to 300 snowboards a year. You're not making 10, 20, 30,000 because I know the numbers of most mid-level brands that are still like grade A brands Mm -hmm. and they're, they're not, you're, you're not surpassing their sales. No, no. So I can't wait for them to disappear. I can't believe they're still around. I can't believe they make skis. How the fuck do you make a ski with a raised edge? You're losing skis. Yes. You didn't know that? No. Good. Keep it that way. So, uh, yeah. So anyways, fuck Gilson. No. Fuck the idea. No. I don't give a fuck. I'm waiting for the hate comments. Bring it on, bitches. Yeah, bring it on because we're right and you're wrong. Gilson yeah. sucks. <laughs> Gilson straight sucks. I can't wait for you to deal with the real snowboarders of the internet and mm-hmm. watch that fucking level of hate. So, yeah. Anyways, that's where we're at for bad ideas. We've pretty much gone through the gamut. If you guys want us to do this again, because there are more bad ideas. Oh, I already, I've already got a couple. Yeah, we will do another podcast in a couple months doing this, because next month we are devoting it to Snowboarder's Blackboard Experiment, Transworld Goodwood, because that has come out. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about some of the other reviews out there, mm-hmm. and there'll probably be a bunch of other topics. I would like to touch on a bunch of the movies that have come out, yep. a couple of the teasers, Stuff like that. Um, and just really go over this state of snowboarding. And we're also going to let you guys submit questions to us. So you can always email them to us. Info at Angry Snowboarder. If you want to snail mail us a, a question, you can do it to this address right up here. If you're new here, remember to subscribe. Click the bell. Get notifications. Because that's what we really, really want. Is you guys getting all the notifications. Not missing this. You'll be able to listen to this on iTunes, Stitcher, Podbean, and uh, Google Play Store. Hopefully, I think I've got it set up on just about everything. You can watch us on YouTube. If you're a member of Angry Snowboarder VIP, you can get the full video a month before anyone else and watch that over there. If you're not a member of Angry Snowboarder VIP, I strongly suggest that you check it out. Kevin, do you have anything you want to add in here? That pretty much covers it. You know, we've got... A bunch of these segments out of this podcast. Leave us comments. Leave us, you know, say something to us. We love to interact with you guys. You know, like Aaron said, he tries to answer any of your questions, any of your comments. You know, we, we like to interact with you, snowboarders of the internet. You're the reason we do all of this. So get at us. Yeah. Uh, one thing is for certain with Copper opening up next month and everything, uh, we will be scheduling at some point you No. Know, November through December, we will be scheduling a little meet and greet. We will be there uh, depending on our schedules, but um, I think we're going to be able to get the whole gang together. We might even drag Marcus out for you. Um, So we'll see, but we're going to try to do a bunch of meet and greets. Uh, Kevin and I are going to do a little bit of traveling this winter, so you might be able to see us um, Utah, maybe Taos, New Mexico, Jackson Hole. Uh, 
we will let you guys know when we're doing things like that. And yeah. we're going to try to do like a regular thing here in Summit County. Maybe we'll do something up at A Basin for all you guys on the Epic Pass. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll do something at Copper for all you guys in the Icon Pass. Uh, don't ask us to go to Winter Park because that was, I hate that resort. I really don't like going I used to love it. Not anymore. It's too mogul-y. It's like either flat or mogul. It's just like yeah. nothing in between. I've never, I've never had a good day at Winter Park. I have. They used to, way back in my college days, they used to have a really good like little park. Uh, but I don't think they ever updated their park features from when I was going there in college. And then they got scary. So... And I'll probably be up at Steamboat at some point, too. So I know Kevin doesn't have a pass up there. If we can get him a ticket, we'll take him up there for the day, maybe. Yeah. But otherwise, uh, I'll do some stuff up at Steamboat, probably. Uh, I'm also thinking about going to Mammoth, because I did get the icon. So I'll probably do a tour of California. So Mammoth, June, Big Bear, Snow Summit, Squaw Alpine. And I'm also thinking maybe something in the Northwest, since Crystal and Summit and Snoqualmie are there. So anytime I travel, we'll do that, but the travel is going to be dependent on getting the car. So if you're an auto broker, please reach out to me because I am looking for a specific car in a specific colorway in a specific trim package. I would love to have someone help me try to find one because I thought I had one tracked down and that fell through. So we get that going on. Uh, other than that, thanks again for tuning in. We really appreciate it. We'll yes, be back we next month. We're going to answer the uh, Angry Snowboarder VIP questions. So I wanted to get to some of them for this month, but I think we're going to hold off, do that next month. So there's some good questions in there. Also, keep an eye out for live streams. We're going to try to do that, which yep. is basically mini podcasts almost. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you can interact with us live. You know, we, you know, I'm sure you're sitting down. You wanted to make a comment about something we were talking about in this video, and that's your benefit with a live stream is you can make a comment while we're talking and then we can address that right away so you've got a question you can get it answered like that right uh if we offended you good that means you're alive and you have feelings and emotions towards snowboarding i'm stoked yep if you're gonna threaten to kill me go right ahead i've had plenty of those in my lifetime i uh, haven't don't make me cry yeah don't make kevin cry he's he's a fragile he's fragile sensitive man. sensitive man he's the sensitive one he has emotions i don't i'm completely devoid i'm pretty sure i'm like the grinch i'm just dead inside <laughs> There's no hope. Like, Christmas doesn't even make me happy anymore. I'm just like, oh, God, it's Christmas. I have to buy gifts for people. Fuck. You know, that type of thing. Uh, I would like to say thank you to all the members of Angry Snowboarder VIP. Without your guys' yep. support, we wouldn't be able to do this. I also uh, do have a PSA. If anyone sees Alan Russell from Salt Lake City's Subaru, it was stolen, please let him know so he can get Susan back. She's mean, she's angry, and she's kind of a hoopty, and whoever stole it was an idiot because there was no snowboards in it. So he does need that back. So shout out to Alan Russell. Shout out to Ian Mulhall from England. He's a good dude. Stoked for him. And uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Do you want to give any shout outs to anyone, Kevin? Um, Big Jim. Yes, to Big Jim. He's got me hooked up with a couple things, and... Is looking to, looking forward to working with us direct. So big Jim, thank you. You're killing it. You're doing a great job, and your bro kills the catalogs. Yes. Um. Figure out a way to plug me in there and shit on me again, please. Yeah, we uh, love that. that. That was the best. Well, that's where I'm gonna leave it. I can't wait to see who gets offended this month. Yep. And we'll be back next month. Thanks, guys.